The starting pitching has been money as of late. But lucky number seven fell just out of reach last night for the Astros. Tonight, Dallas Keuchel takes on an Oriole attack filled with high rollers as Brandon Barnes and the Astros double down on a seventh win in eight tries. A high-stakes showdown in Houston next. From Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas, Comcast Sportsnet brings you Houston Astros baseball. Tonight, it's game two of this three-game series between the Astros and the Baltimore Orioles. Good evening, everybody. Bill Brown, Alan Ashby, Jeff Blum. 6-0 road trip, a loss last night. We'll see if things can get revved up again tonight, Ash. Yeah, I'd love to see that happen. It, it comes down to pitching, but the Astros got the solid pitching last night, just not enough offense. And Blummer, they continue to make some good plays defensively. That didn't always happen in last night's game. Yeah, that's what they've got to do. Defense is a big key. When you're getting that starting pitching, usually that defense is in rhythm. And last night, they may have been a little tired from that road trip, but look for them to turn things around today. A lot of eyes are on Brandon Barnes, who's getting this everyday opportunity now with Justin Maxwell just having begun his injury rehab assignment in the minors. So far, there's the way it shakes out. What do you read into those numbers, Ash? Well, he certainly has hit the left-handers much better to this point than the right-handers. Uh, the, the thing about Brandon Barnes, it's really about the defense. But if he's going to play on this Astros club on a steady basis, for me, it's a center fielder. Not enough power to play in the corners, but in the minor leagues, hit for some power. Also stole some bases, so he's very intriguing. Uh, I, I just think we all need to see more of him. What are you seeing in him, Jeff? Well, the defense is definitely not his problem. He's gone out there. He's airless in all the games he's played this year in center field. But you're right, Ash. I don't think he has a pop to move to the corner, but he might be one of those guys that moves into a platoon situation. But he is a guy I'd like to see in the lineup because his average with runners in scoring position is 471. And run production is key for the pitching we're getting right now. He's been a good occasional player, but I was asking him before the game how different his mindset is when he knows he's going to be in the lineup. He said it's not different at all. Well, this is going to be an interesting time ahead for Brandon Barnes to try to establish himself in the lineup every night. Now, coming up, Julia Morales has more on a native Texan. And the guy who's leading in home runs in the major leagues, Mr. Chris Davis, has 20. He's from Longview. Julia has more on him in just a moment.
Comcast Sportsnet. We're almost underway here at Minute Maid Park with the Astros and Orioles going in the second game of a three-game series. The Houston Astros will try to keep the bat of Chris Davis quiet again tonight. The first baseman for the Baltimore Orioles will be playing in front of a lot of family and friends as he is from Longview, Texas, and his parents are actually from north of Houston. So lots of people here cheering him on. And good memories come to Chris Davis when he comes back to this ballpark. He made his major league debut here in 2008 with the Texas Rangers. Also got his first major league hit here. So lots of good memories for him. He's come a long way since then, and he has been on fire to start the season, driving in 16 runs in his first four games. He leads the American League in home runs. Check it out, 20 already, 52 RBI. He's second in average with 355. Not bad, right? Well, last night, Lucas Harrell did a nice job against him, giving up his only hit of the night right there, a broken bat single. But he also got it looking. Nice pitch there for Harrell. Not an easy task to get this guy out. I've been talking to some of the pitchers about pitching Chris Davis. Well, the first thing they say, can't make a mistake against a guy that is that hot right now. But they're also trying to work the edges for this guy, get him to expand his zone a little bit. All right, coming up, Dallas Keuchel will take on the task of trying to get Chris Davis out and the Orioles trying to carry some of his momentum from his last start in Anaheim. The lefty and the Astros taking on the Orioles right after the break. Stay with us. by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. And by the Chipotle Chicken Club Combo, which is back for a limited time at Jack in the Box. Try one today with fries and a drink for just $4.99 plus tax. So as they paddle down the bayous here in downtown Houston, it's the Astros and Orioles in air-conditioned comfort at Minute Maid Park. It's game two of a three-game series. Bill Brown, Alan Ashby, Jeff Blum. And this game is just a couple of minutes away from starting. We have some extra time, guys. What do you feel like talking about? <laughs> um, <laughs> what's going on in, in uh, Major League Baseball? Oh, that's right. They've the draft. To... Well, <laughs> let's uh, look ahead to this pitching matchup tonight. For one thing, Dallas Keuchel is coming off a very good game against the Angels. He did do good. See, he stole that cutter. I think we're going to have some video later on in the game about it. You see his arm angle and what he's doing, but he's throwing a lot more off speed as he posed early in the season when he was relying on his fastball. But... Tonight, an ex-teammate, Freddy Garcia, you can expect to see a lot of slow stuff from him. Freddy Garcia, last time out, dominated over eight innings with that stuff. Doesn't quite have the velocity. He's got to go to that split finger quite a bit now. 
Now the Astros have taken the field. We check the starting lineup now for Buck Showalter's Baltimore Orioles, who are two and a half games out of the lead in the AL East. Nate McLeod leads it off. He's the left fielder. Manny Machado's at third base. J.J. Hardy is bumped up to the number three spot in the lineup at shortstop. Nick Markakis will miss tonight and tomorrow's game away after the death of a grandparent. Adam Jones is the center fielder. Chris Davis at first base. Matt Wieter is the catcher. Danny Valencia, the DH, batting seventh. It's Steve Pierce in right field for Marquecas tonight, batting eighth. And Alexei Casilla is the second baseman. And on the mound tonight for the Astros is left-hander Dallas Keuchel. Rumor has it he's benefited from having Eric Bedard in the rotation. Can kind of compare notes, speed off each other, see what works against right-handed hitters. But he's done a good job of late. Last outing in Anaheim went seven innings, giving up six hits, two earned runs, striking out four and walking nobody. That seven inning outing, his longest of the year. And behind him tonight defensively, Carlos Corporan behind the plate. Around the infield, Carlos Pena, Jose Altuve, Marwin Gonzalez, and Matt Dominguez in the outfield. Brandon Barnes again flashed in the leather and center, surrounded by Trevor Crow and JD Martinez. The Orioles are leading the league in total bases and in slugging, also in homers. You see some of the birds. Davis with 20 bombs, Machado, 325 average, and Adam Jones not only has those glittering offensive numbers, but he can take some numbers away from the other team, Blummer. So we saw him track down some balls we thought were definitely hits and actually had to go to the replay to double check how he did it. But the <laughs> Lucas Harrell did a great job of keeping those guys in check last night. Absolutely, he did. Unfortunately for the Astros, they lost it 4-1. to one. And now Keiko works to Nate McLeod. There's strike one. McLeod had 296 with four homers. Has driven, driven in a dozen. And last night he stole a couple and scored a run, going one for four in that game. Keiko's gotten a lot of ground balls this year. One ball, one strike. That is the case when he throws his fastball a high percentage of the time. And he's leading the American League in ground ball to fly ball ratio. We were hearing from Jeff Murphy, who is out in the bullpen, that uh, Dallas is really working on standing tall this year, trying to throw in a more downward plane. Seems to be working. Gets about a ground ball and a half for every ball hit in the air this year, so it, it's adding up very nicely for him. Dallas is 6 3. With that 2 and 2 record, he faces the Orioles for the first time in his career. Orioles have won seven straight from the Astros. It's a two ball two strike count with Machado on deck. McClough is tied for the American League lead in stolen bases after the two last night pushed him up to 21 for the year. He hits this one deep to right center field. Barnes on the run. That's a one hopper and goes out of play which might have saved the Astros a base there it's a double into those restaurant seats out in center field and McLeod gets his 12th two base hit of the year as well as McLeod runs I don't think there's any doubt about it Brownie I think he has a triple if this ball doesn't bounce out of here a curveball that just simply hung left up for the left hand hitter yeah, that thing ballooned up there and just stayed in the upper part of the zone in the two strikes McLaughlin is a pretty good hitter and just waffles it into that right center field gap. Well, last night he stole second and third and later scored in that inning. Well, the Astros will be watching him with Marwin Gonzalez playing fairly close to him right now. And Machado the batter one for four last night. That's in the dirt and it's ball one. The Orioles last night had four runs on eight hits. Machado in the third inning doubled and scored. And that made it two to nothing Baltimore at that point. With their pitching staff, they got the lead and were able to maintain it. Machado lays off and the extremely talented third baseman goes to 2 0 on the count, just 20 years old. And a shortstop until last year. He only played about two or three games at third in the minor leagues before he was bumped up to the big league club and then played every inning of every game for the rest of the year from early August on through the playoffs. McLeod streaks for third base and the routine grounded to shortstop gets him there. It was hit too slowly to prevent McLeod from getting to third. 
good read by Nate McLeod. There's a base runner at second base. You want to see that ball on the left hand side. And I think you're right, Brownie. That ball hit at the rate of speed it was, allowed him to get a good jump on it and make it be on his left hand side. Marwin Gonzalez taking the smart route and getting the out at first. It's always that rule as a base runner at second base. If you can get that ball well enough behind you as you head toward third base, you're likely to not even draw a throw. You can also change your angle running into third base to create a you know, maybe a little a bit of an obstacle in between you and the shortstop, but not allowing him to make that throw too. Swing a little deep on that left field side. Foul ball by J.J. Hardy. Hardy two for four in last night's game. Uh, starts the night with 12 homers, 34 runs batted in, hitting 250. After hitting 22 home runs last year, he drove in 68. J.J. 30 years old. He came up through the Milwaukee organization, a second round pick in 01. And went to the Twins in a trade before Baltimore got him after the 2010 season in another deal. He chased that one. 0 oh 2. I think JJ realizing the infield's playing him back and great opportunity to drive in the runner at third with just a lousy ground ball being a little aggressive. It's the first time he swung at the first pitch in 21 plate appearances. Hardy's not biting there, and it's a one ball, two strike count for Keichel. I think as a hitter, that's a great way to catch a team off guard. Reports will say, look, he likes to take a lot of first pitches, get a man at third base less than two outs, and maybe get that crippled fastball to start things and drive in a run. Good time to ambush him. Two balls, two strikes to J.J. Hardy, who last year became the fourth different Orioles shortstop to win a gold glove. Fantastic year in the field. He's the only shortstop in the majors to hit at least 20 homers in each of the past two seasons. Ground ball up the middle, and that will make it one to nothing, Baltimore. RBI single by Hardy. 35th run batted in for J.J. Hardy. What a difference if, as a pitcher, you could get your glove on this ball quickly. And Michael tried with everything he had, but. If you don't square up, it's it's just going to be awfully tough. Still another off-speed pitch, maybe a little bit further up in the zone than Dallas Keuchel wanted, and allowed J.J. Hardy to get barrel on it, hit it hard enough to get it past Altuve. Now it's Adam Jones batting. He was 0 for 4 last night, but had an impact with his glove in that game. Dirt for ball one. Jones with 11 homers, 37 runs batted in, has a 307 batting average. He made one good catch on Matt Dominguez and another fine catch on Jose Altuve. Some kind of plays in center field. Adam Jones can go get it, and a lot of times you'll see him blowing a bubble as he's backtracking there. But this is the one that was really dazzling. You see, he started to blow a bubble, and decided, well, maybe I better go ahead and make the play without. And I think Minute Maid Park's one of those ballparks where a center fielder can really relax and put his head down and go back over his shoulder like that, yep. knowing he's got another yep. 200 feet before he gets anywhere near a wall. Isn't that the truth? A center fielder in this park can be so valuable. I think it's good news that before you get to the wall, you'll run into a, a, a flag get your pole. legs cut out <laughs> from yeah. underneath you and yeah. headbutt the foul flag, flag pole. Adam Jones was the Orioles MVP last year. Fly ball here. Barnes back. And tagging at first, Hardy, but he's just going to draw a throw and hold on. Two outs. Hey, think about guys like Carlos Beltran who Controlled center field here. And Willie Tavares that could really provide an immense amount of help to a pitching staff. You know, if you're auditioning, and I think Brandon Barnes is to some degree as a center fielder, what better place to get a chance to, to go track him down from gap to gap? True. Now it's Chris Davis coming up. Davis with 20 homers and 52 runs batted in with eye popping numbers here. 58 games into the season. This one gets by, and that will allow 
Hardy to advance to second base on a wild pitch by Keiko. Kind of a case of stiffening and the glove coming up just a little bit instead of just relaxing over the baseball. See that glove come up, it provides some five hole and provides some angles as well as balls can kick from side to side. Well, Davis now has a runner in scoring position and a 1 0 count. As Julia mentioned earlier, he got his first major league hit here in 08. Member of the Rangers, then. It's a two ball, no strike count to Chris Davis. He's 27. He's a fifth round pick in 06. It's kind of interesting now that we're a few hours away from the draft to look back at where some of the top performers in the game were drafted. Fifth rounder here, leading the majors and homers. Two balls, one strike. We focus so much on that first pick for each club, but oh boy, that's so much the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, I'm thinking of Chris Davis and trying to imagine what the scout's saying. Yeah, but he doesn't run all that well. <laughs> yeah. Foul tip makes it two and two. Well, you know, in those draft rooms, and the scouts have been gathered in there. They spend all day in there discussing these guys, dissecting them. Probably feel like they're filleting fish by the time they get finished for the whole day in there. They have looked at every different thing that they know about a player. Broken bat. It rolls to Pena. And he tosses to Keiko. Davis got a broken bat hit last night. This one shatters. And it's the third out. And it's 1 0 Baltimore. Now the Astros come up against Freddy Garcia, former Astro farmhand with Bo Porter's lineup card, starting with Brandon Barnes in center field, continuing with second baseman Jose Altuve. The DH is Jason Castro. In left field, J.D. Martinez. The catcher, Carlos Corporan. At first base, Carlos Pena. In right field, Trevor Crow. The third baseman, Matt Dominguez. And the shortstop is Marwin Gonzalez. Freddy Garcia, 36 years of age now, 2-2 two and two on the year. 3.57, a nice ERA. And eight shutout innings against Washington in a win last time out. He's won two straight and two and all over his last three starts. So the veteran, and you can certainly say that about Freddie Garcia, has been pitching well. Jeff Plum can tell us a whole lot about him. They were teammates on that 05 World Series winning Chicago White Sox team. Strike one to Brandon Barnes, 286, three homers, 14 runs batted in. Brandon had a single and a homer last night. Garcia just dialed it up in game four of that World Series here. Seven innings of shutout ball to beat the Astros and tuck it away for the Sox. I think that's pretty interesting. You're talking about last night about the pitching and the hitting and the home runs and what that translates into winning. 
go back to that 05 World Series, and our starting pitching is basically what carried us through that entire playoffs. We had four complete games in Anaheim against a really good ball club, and then we came in here and won the World Series in four games, but the margin of victory was only six. Cap to the left side, barehanded Machado. Uh, he pulled out a bazooka from his right hip to get Barnes for out number one. You know, the, the thing is, if you've got a pitching staff that carries you, and they've got an ERA as a group around the three mark, you can win on four runs a game. But the standard out there is you've got to score five plus runs a game to win on a, a regular basis. I'd feel a lot more comfortable with that. Well, you're looking at a shortstop playing third base. That is pretty impressive stuff, Lumber. Yeah, he is. It's fun to watch him. He's got two kids at third base in this game today. The Astros, Matt Dominguez, and that kid right there, Machado. Jose out too, babe. Looks at ball one. Jose has a seven game hitting streak with seven hits in seven games. 295, two homers, 21 runs batted in. So you might say, well, all right, uh, his average during that seven game streak is 226. He's in a slump during a hitting streak. Well, not so much, but he's been hitting some balls that have been caught, like last night in the eighth inning. He sent one for that ride, and you saw earlier the catch by Jones in center field. He has been robbed a few times. And this one won't rob him. Has a hit into left center field and an eight game streak for Altuve. Let's take a look at who's playing defense behind Freddy Garcia. Left field, Nate McLeod, Adam Jones again in center field. Steve Pierce taking over for Marquecas, who's missing his first game of the season. Manny Machado at third base, J.J. Hardy at short, Alexi Casilla at second base, Chris Davis at first, Matt Weir behind the plate. And that's a start with Jason Castro coming up next. Castro's first round pick in 08, 272, seven homers, 17 runs batted in. From Castro Valley, California, and Stanford. Now, this time tomorrow night, will Mark Appel be the first pick of the draft? Another Stanford player. Will he be headed to the Astros? Will he be going to the Cubs? Who have the second pick? Or will he fall further down the list? A lot of. Uh, Interesting thinking going on as baseball fans review the possibilities for tomorrow. Ash, what's your gut feeling about what the Astros are doing tomorrow? Well, I'm not hearing anything with the bottom line. They, they're holding the cards as close to the best as possible. In fact, I hear that they may not even know amongst themselves right now. I, I, I kind of wonder about that, but uh, I, I would probably look toward Oklahoma and their big right hander. Jonathan Gray, there's a deep drive toward the bullpen, way out into right center field. Castro makes it two to one. Houston jumped all over that Garcia pitch. That's number eight for Jason Castro. Now, Jason Castro makes you wonder do you want a pitcher with that first pick or a guy who can swing the stick? Well, he has of late made himself look every bit like an early first round pick. My goodness, that was beautiful. That angle from behind home plate. Missed a spot by a good foot, left it middle in. Castro just dropped the head, nice short to it, yep. long through it, and drove it in that bullpen. That was beautiful. He can drive it to all parts of the field. JD Martinez holds it away. There's strike one. That was the eighth home run allowed by Freddie Garcia in his 36th inning. Solid square up of the bat by Castro. So you look at some of the numbers of say Chris Davis this year. I I, I will not bring up Miguel Cabrera because it's just not fair. <laughs> but Chris Davis, if, if you can land a guy like that, and that's awfully hard to do that, is he as valuable, more valuable than a front of the uh, rotation pitcher that you can pick up? And I think that's that tough debate that you could continue with forever. It sure is. One and two. Well, most managers would love to have a guy who has 20 bombs, 52 runs batted in on June 5th. Liner caught by Hardy. Well hit ball by Martinez. So the Astros swinging it well of late. And of course, you got to start with Jason Castro. Great numbers, 
here since May 18th. He's been a player of the week. Carlos Pena has picked up his game. Chris Carter been hitting the home run, and those home runs have provided some wins for the club. Castro now with his long ball tonight has five homers in his last 50 at bats. Carlos Corporan getting the start behind the plate, so both catchers are in that lineup. And that one floats high for ball one. Carlos has a six game hitting streak. A 308 batting average. He has four homers. He's driven in nine. Day game coming tomorrow, so both catchers are in there against the righty Garcia. We'll see who does the work behind the dish tomorrow at 110. It two balls, no strikes. As Astros fans who have followed the club for a while well know, Freddie Garcia signed with Houston. Being born in Caracas, Venezuela. And 93 was traded to Seattle in July of 98. And a package for Randy Johnson. That's a liner headed for right field. That one rips off the wall. And here's a shot at second. Whoop! He's getting back to first, and he is safe there. Just barely made it back. Ahead of the Casilla three lane. As Pierce played it well off the wall, Pierce has a good arm. You want to know the definition of panic? <laughs> Watch this replay. <laughs> if you're Carlos Corporan, you know you've just hit one off the wall. You've got to get two bases, but there's no shot at it whatsoever. And now you've got to make sure you don't make the final out of the inning. Credit Steve Pierce in right field, too. He played with Pittsburgh for a little bit, so he has a little idea of what he's doing out there in Minute Maid Park, but that is a short porch. And Carlos scalded that ball, so it got to the wall pretty quick and bounced back to Steve. It was a laser shot. Now Carlos Pena. Strike one to Carlos at you know, 241. Blummer, you were never that guy. The guy that just had to dig with everything he had to pick up the extra base. I know you weren't. You're, you're chuckling but, when you say this. But <laughs> I was that guy, and I know what that feels like going around first base at times. Awfully tough. Three hits in the inning off Garcia. Infield shifted around as usual. Pena takes it. Pena's had a rough time hitting Garcia. Five hits and 43 career at bats, one homer. Carlos said he's always been a pretty patient hitter. He's pretty patient getting in and out of the box, too. Mm -hmm. Tops it foul by Davis. It's a one ball, two strike count. You know, Brownie, you were talking about this guy, but. The Seattle Mariners in 2001 had the American League leading pitcher in innings pitched and ERA that year. And we're talking a ways back 2001 and it's Freddy Garcia. 18 and 6 that year with a 3.05 ERA 238 innings for Freddy Garcia. Can you land that pitcher that can last a decade or more. Boy. Steven Strasburg's on the disabled list right now. Well, I was just going to say, more teams are trying to take, you know, put their hand down there and really control the situation, extend these guys' careers by cutting down on innings at the big league level. Strasburg is the, the first one that they've done it to. You wonder how many more teams are going to start using that model with their younger pitchers. Foul ball. Of course, here's some cold, hard reality. Even with a guy like Freddie Garcia, who's been around forever and had a solid career. You've got some years in there where he threw 58 innings 2007, 15 innings in 08, 56 the following year. And so it's not all 200 plus innings every time you, you look back at a year. Well, in fact, uh, many would be surprised if they were flashing back to 09 or so that he's pitching still now. That's high to right center field. Here's watching this one fly. That's another two run shot. Carlos Pena, number six. And it's a huge four run first for the Astros, who lead it four to one. A pair of two run homers. Pena now has 18 runs batted in. I think the Astros are caught up on their sleep, guys. <laughs> Yesterday was just an aberration. These guys are coming out swinging the pole. That is nice to see. And Dallas Keiko gets to breathe a little bit. That wasn't everything into it either. No, that was that off speed pitch late in the count, but does a good job of keeping his hands back. 
And when we say staying through the ball, he gets to that contact point in a great shape, but it's through the ball is what gives him that lift and strength to get it over the wall. And Trevor Crow in right field for this game takes ball one. Pena with number six. It's his 18th career homer against Baltimore pitching. That's in for a strike. This after Freddie Garcia in his last start shut out Washington for eight innings. Freddie has 154 major league wins. One ball, two strikes with Crow having reached base safely in four of his last five plate appearances, getting the ball in right with Jimmy Paredes taking a seat tonight. Garcia is ninth on the active win list. And he petted number one with 249 wins. And his son Josh from Deer Park after an outstanding year. Could be hearing his name called pretty high in the draft tomorrow as well. But at some point Andy's going to have to shut it down and be able to come home and watch what's going on with with the kids and all the things they're doing. He is. Oh maybe not. Ball foul. It's it's so funny because years back Andy told me he was as, as close as he could be to being done. Yeah. He, he didn't want to go on pitching a number of years more and and I'm talking about probably mid first uh, decade in the 2000s. Yeah. And so yeah it's been amazing to see him go on and on until you reminded him that he did pitch left handed you know left handed <laughs> and he was quite effective and one of the greatest postseason pitchers of all time and there are a few other things you could talk about with Andy. <laughs> Why quit now why not pitch until Josh arrives on the major league scene. <laughs> you see Castro and Pena there they want to get up to the plate again and unleash those home run swings. To the right side, diving Davis from his knees, and he gets the out at first with Garcia covering. Altuve singled, Castro homer. Martinez lined out, Corcoran singled, Pena homer, and it's four to one Houston after one. On top 4 1 as we head to the second here. It's time for our Geico quote of the day. It is if you throw them down the middle, you can hit on the edges too. I feel like that's helped my control a little bit. That comes from Lucas Harrell, who started last night, but he's not talking about last night's start. He's actually talking about bullpen sessions. Pitching coach Doug Brotel, Brokale told me this too. They've been working on throwing strikes during their sessions, and he's seen his pitchers be more aggressive because of it. They're throwing more first pitch strikes. I want to know what Ash thinks of these strike throwing sessions. Well Julia I, I guess my comment is it certainly helps if you have a ball that moves quite a bit and Lucas Harrell with that sinker that falls into that kind of play and I, I think a lot of guys that have been good sinker ball pitchers through the years have benefited by 
trying to throw the ball through the heart of the plate. Number one, strikes tend to help over balls. And if you can get it down on top of that, I think Lucas Harrell can survive even in games by trying to find a lot of the plate and letting the action take care of things. Blummer was chuckling when you said that. <laughs> hey, I got an idea. Let's go to the bullpen and work on throwing strikes. What do you say? Come yeah, on, guys. Yeah. Let's go get them. It sounds uh, it sounds really silly, but it's amazing what takes place out there at times. Sometimes guys will just tell you they'll scream at you. I'm just trying to get loose. Well, go ahead and get loose with strikes. Paying you short hop play and a nice play, Michael. That would be akin to you going in the batting cage and working on getting hits, Blummer. Yeah, I'm going to go in there and work on hits or only swing at strikes. <laughs> I don't know that. Sometimes you got you can oversimplify it, but I, I understand what Ash is saying and what I think Lucas was trying to say with the movement he does have on his ball. But <laughs> sometimes you got to really appreciate how uh, how quirky and thoughtful pitchers can be. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, pitchers are great. I've been friends with a lot of pitchers, but sometimes you hear them speak and you just kind of go, huh? <laughs> Yeah, but you're talking about in game being friends with pitchers. No, actually, I mean, where, where you just crush them all the time, right? <laughs> yeah, it makes for some good competitive banter sometimes. But yeah, I mean, there's times where I just I would just walk away <laughs> just because I didn't understand what was going on. You're talking about practice, yeah. <laughs> You're talking about practice. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Two. Danny Valencia, the DH. Alan Iverson has just walked in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, man, I love it. But Lucas Harrell has shown himself to be one of those more peculiar pitchers that we've we've run into over the years. Corky, you, you, to you say the least. Yeah. Tell you what, no walks, six strikeouts in seven innings, one earned run. Because he threw strikes. Okay. <laughs> he can be quirky. Work in that zone. Valencia shoots one into the right field corner after hitting a homer last night. He's going to head for second and get a double here. The throw is offline, but it would have been close. Trevor Crow's throw to the outfield side of the bag, but that's the third double for Valencia. Trevor Crow did a good job of getting that ball quickly and showed a good arm. We were kind of deep on the angle that we have up here, but if it was online, he might have had a shot. Yeah, Trevor, Trevor certainly could have worked on the strike zone right there because I think he had a great shot at his man. Will he be sent to the bullpen tomorrow? Well, if he does, Doug Brocale will get it straightened out, that's for sure. Yeah, that's getting rid of the ball nice and quick. Up two, they tried with the flip. I appreciate that. Now Steve Pierce, the right fielder. He was with the Astros last year. They strike one to Steve. 219, three homers, nine runs batted in. Steve is 30 years old from Lakeland, Florida. Went to South Carolina where he had a big senior season with 21 homers. Last year, he played for three different major league clubs, including Baltimore and Houston, as well as the Yankees. So he's feeling right home and schizophrenic with these two clubs playing each other, probably. No balls, two strikes. Speaking of schizophrenic, we'll get back to the pitchers. And I think, you know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I think you hear you hear pitchers trying to be too fine, trying to work those edges, and you're trying to throw all these off-speed pitches and. Try and figure out where your release point's going to be on a slider, curveball, changeup in order to get a strike or try and hit that corner. But I think working that middle of the zone, it opens up your visual a little bit more, saying, I, I've got a chance to work in the zone as opposed to trying to nitpick or nibble, nibble on corners or you can start walking guys, you know. So I think working strikes, you know, uh, is a good idea. You know what I, I think of it as you say that? I, I think all of all professional athletes once things start going well you start maybe thinking outside the box a little bit more about how you can even get better and I think that's what happens with pitchers when they start trying to get too fine it suddenly feels easy and now we're going to going to paint a little bit more and on the other hand you hear pitchers when they're getting raked oh man I'm catching too much of the plate I right. gotta start working the edges so it's kind of a double edged sword to work with but I like the idea that Doug is you know giving these guys some options and it's working you got to find those things that click. I know with a lot of the hitting coaches, if you find the right vernacular to talk to these guys with, it's going to click. They're going to go, oh, yeah, you know, coach said, you know, yep. uh, keep my hands inside the ball, and that's what works. So if, it, if Doug is saying, hey, throw strikes in the strike zone when you're in the bullpen, it seems to be working. If a guy has a, a standard over-the-top four-seam fastball that's 90, 91 miles an hour, and he says, I'm going to try to work to the heart of the plate, 
probably not going to work. Exactly. Yeah. But if he's got a good sinking action or a cutter or whatever the case may be, now he's got a chance. When you start it at the heart of the plate, it starts to work toward the corners. Exactly. That's a very good way of putting it. Doug Brocale, Bo Porter, their club up four to one. Hoping Dallas Keiko can get Alexi Casilla here to win the Orioles' second inning. That works for strike two. Garcia came up with the Angels, then he was traded to the Twins. Baltimore made him a waiver claim last year. Switch hitter. And Brian Roberts, who at one point was a very good Major League second baseman, hurt again this year for Baltimore. He's asking a couple of their broadcasters if Brian Roberts were to get healthy once again. Would he get inserted at second base? And they said, yeah, he would. He's, he's better than anybody they have. But I think he's reached that point in his career that uh, it, the Orioles feel like they can't count on him anymore. Good stop by Carlos Corporan. It's three balls, two strikes now. But as a switch hitter who loaded up, I mean, he could go 50 doubles a year. He was one of those kinds of guys. And he had some home run pop there for a while. Just a little guy. But took advantage of a, a friendly home run ballpark in Baltimore. Uh, a heck of a ball player. Bounce foul. Keiko was telling me, uh, Blummer, the other day that he was pitching well in September last year. He had four good starts in a row, feeling good about things. But then the last start of the season. It just just really stuck in his crawl that he did not throw the ball well at all. There were things he didn't do that he had been doing, and he went home and did some soul searching over the winter. And as a result, we're seeing a different, new and improved version. He's pitching inside a lot better this year. I think that's a big key for some of these left-handers who don't have the fastball to blow guys away on that outside corner. Because you got to work that inside corner. We see it with Eric Bedard, him being able to work that inside corner and even just keep guys off balance allows their off speed pitches to be that much better when they're kind of, you plant that seed, you might come inside. And uh, you were just talking about Brian Roberts, and we've got a tweet of the day from at Astros County. It says Brian Roberts has more all star votes than Jose Altuve. Brian Roberts has 12 ABs this season. Apparently he was pretty good in those 12 at bats, huh? Must have been. I think Astros County is trying to light a fire underneath the Astro fan base to get Altuve some more votes. Yeah. Deservedly so. That's fine. Nate McLeod, the batter. Altuve over to his left, but Payne is in front of him and throws. Whoa, what a play by Keichel. He had to reach way out and save Pena throwing error for the third out. It's no runs a hit. Two men left on that big play. Four to one Astros.
Four to one ball game. The Astros lead it as they bat in the second inning with Matt Dominguez leading off. And he looks at ball one. At 233, Matt has eight homers, 29 runs batted in. He's driven in a run in four of his last seven games and 10 of his last 18 games. Garcia goes to a 2 0 count. Freddie does not throw his fastball in the upper velocity of major league pitchers averaging 87. That's a pretty low average for a major league fastball, but he survives by using his other pitch as well. And uh, as Dan Radisson was telling me, he's one of the Astros hitting coaches. You saw that last fastball. That, that's what he does. He, he tantalizes hitters with the upper reaches of the strike zone with that fastball. And he said he gets a lot of foul balls on him. Tap the shortstop. And Hardy takes care of it. One out. You're always trying to make the right choices, obviously, as a hitter, but I sure would rather take my hack on that 2 0 fastball that was up than that 2 1 slider that was working toward the outside edge. Yes. Marlon Gonzalez will be next at 228 with three homers, 11 runs batted in. Brandon Barnes on deck. Astros have gone 11 and 8 in their last 19 games. Orioles have been on a pretty good surge. They've won 10 of 14. Freddie Garcia deals ball one. Freddie Garcia signed with this Baltimore club March 29th at the end of spring training. Signed a minor league deal. I drive to right center again. Let's see if this is number three of the night for the Astros. And that one to the total. Marlon Gonzalez with number four of the year. And the Astros have hit three bombs here. Makes it five to one. That swing has been MIA for a while for Marwin Gonzalez, but the way he's played shortstop, if he could add this long ball a bit more into his repertoire, he becomes excessively valuable. A hanging split finger right there. Marwin stayed back on it good, hitting against that front side and unloaded. That split finger's not working for Freddie Garcia. It's going to be a good night for the Astros. That is a very important pitch for him. Ball one to Barnes. So three bombs already. That's four homers, 12 runs batted in for Marwin. And then last start, Freddie really had that split finger in a perfect spot. But tonight, he's not doing that. There's another split finger right there, stayed up in the zone. Brandon just missed that one. Batting average against Freddie was 227 when this game started, but already Steve Johnson has begun to throw in the bullpen. And Freddie's one of those guys who keeps his walks down, though. And that's a key, too, not swinging at that pitch. So Barnes now has a 2 1 count. We're asking Brandon, who's the uh, the longest term Astro as far as years in the organization, minor league and major league, the day he got drafted. That was in 05. He was a sixth round pick. And uh, he was a freshman at junior college when he got drafted. He takes a walk. That's number one for Garcia. Log on to CSNHouston.com and click on In Game Live to enhance your Astros experience via computer, smartphone, or tablet. Get in depth stats and join the social buzz. In Game Live only on CSNHouston.com. Rick Adair is the pitching coach for the Baltimore Orioles. And uh, Brandon Barnes said, Well, you know, they told me I was going to be maybe a second or third round pick. Sixth round, that was fine. It was just about getting an opportunity. So crooked numbers for Freddie Garcia. And now it's Jose Altuve. Of course, he was an undrafted player, signed as a free agent in Venezuela. Altuve single to left center and rode home on the Castro two run homer. And reaches for that one, there's strike one. Now the hitting coaches were saying uh, tonight, even though Altuve's average has dropped below 300 after such a torrid month of April, we're not worried about this guy. Well, 
We're talking about a hitting streak. That's true. He has been struggling during a hitting streak. <laughs> it's kind of weird, isn't it? Eight game hitting streak, eight hits. Runner going. Wieters bounces the throw and still gets him. Well, it was a one hop throw, but it was right on the bag. And Barnes is thrown out for out number two. Might I say that one hop throw wound up as perfect as you could make it and provided an easy quick tag down at the bag. Watch out if you're Freddie Garcia. That was close. Watch this ball go right over the pitcher. Yeah, that's just perfection. Readers continues to throw exceptionally well. He's thrown out 50% this year. Good not, catch and tag, yeah, too. Not exactly the way you plan it, but uh, when it's all said and done, you just couldn't make it easier for the infielder. Yeah, the coach back in the day said it doesn't have to be pretty. Outs is outs. Yeah. One and two to Altuve now. Barnes is now four for eight in base stealing. Yeah, Garcia was almost the casualty on that very low throw from Wieters. Anybody have Mike Piazza flashbacks? <laughs> Yeah, but he squared a couple guys up. There wasn't that kind of velocity on it. <laughs> wow. Big hook catches out to the looking strikeout number one and Marwin Gonzalez makes it a three home run night for Houston. And after two of five to one Astro lead. It's 5-1 Astros in the top of the third. Don't miss your chance to get your orbit bobble belly. Saturday, June 15th, the Astros take on the Chicago White Sox at 6:15. Be sure to get to the park early. 10,000 fans will receive an orbit bobble belly, courtesy of Coca-Cola. Call 1-877-9-ASTROS to get your tickets now, guys. Did you guys know Julia does not eat before games? <laughs> or during games. She's stockpiling calories for the game time. I have bad eating habits. <laughs> Manny Machado leads it off. There's strike one to Manny. Well, part of her job is to sample food. Yep. And sample. Sample being the key word in that <laughs> phrase, Brownie. Not finish off. Yeah. You know, so. if, if that's the case, nobody works harder than Julia. <laughs> <laughs> but he's right. He's right. I gotta, I gotta admit. You're doing a very thorough and complete job of that, Julia. Thank you very much. And uh, we enjoyed hearing about the strawberry shortcake. There's a shot at backhanded Matt Dominguez long throw. Pretty play. These two guys might be doing this to each other for the next decade. Somebody didn't get the memo. Don't hit it to third. Ball was smoked by Manny Machado. But I just love that Matt Dominguez isn't trying to do too much. He, he does a good job of reading the hop, staying back, realizing he's going to get a pretty good hop. Didn't try and get in front of it. Just use that glove. I think that guy reads the papers and all the anticipation and the hype and all the stuff going on. I just get the impression he just says, ah, "I'm going to play a ball game tonight. I don't know what's going on around me." 
I think you're right. Strike one to J.J. Hardy with the RBI single to center field. Nice quick pace for a Dallas Keuchel. And it's 0-2. Listen to this lineup for the Corpus Christi Hooks tonight. Leading off in left field, George Springer. Batting third at first base, Jonathan Singleton. Batting fourth in center field, Justin Maxwell. It doesn't sound half bad. I'd say we're going to be hearing that pretty soon, somewhere around here, aren't we? Yes. Good chance. Singleton's first game with Corpus Christi. Fly ball to right field. Maxwell's second game with Corpus Christi. Pro takes care of out number two. So let's check in on Jonathan Singleton, just promoted to double A after hitting 286 in six games at A ball quad cities. Three homers, five runs batted in, an 810 slugging percentage. And he moved up and uh, playing Midland tonight. And wouldn't you know it, with all that firepower in the lineup, it's Midland two, Corpus Christi nothing in the third. Well, if you're expected to step in and hit the long ball, I, I guess he did exactly what he's expected to do. Didn't he, though? Adam Jones now. Third ball for ball one. J Max was 0 for 3 last night in his debut for Corpus Christi. Stole a base, scored a run, and the Hooks won 9 to 5 over Midland. As he works his way back from a fractured bone in his left hand. Sharply hit back, handed out to him, throwing from center field. Tremendous play. Jose Altuve from way behind second base on the grass. This is a beauty. He's giving Adam Jones a taste of his own medicine right there. Heck of a play. Bottom of the third, the Astros on top with a couple home run balls, five to one. The Astros wrap up their series with Baltimore tomorrow afternoon. Come see Astro, Castro and Altuve face off against Chris Davis, Manny Machado, and the rest of the Astros. Call 18779 Astros or visit Astros.com to get your tickets now. And I thoroughly apologize for butchering that one. Huh? My goodness. Join the club. Castro, Astro, they're all the same. Well, Castro was very impressive first time up. Now he gets a curveball to rifle that two run homer into the bullpen. So the bullpen has been the target for all three home runs for the Astros tonight off Freddie Garcia. This, this guy's from Astro Valley, California, right? Yes, he <laughs> yes, is. Yes. 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 They renamed him. No balls, two strikes. Astros are honoring the courageous Houston firefighters who lost their lives. During this brief three game homestand, the special patches there. And Jason's father, grandfather, both firefighters, and his brother currently is one. Bud Norris's grandfather was a firefighter. So those folks have a chance to receive free tickets for their immediate families during this series at Minute Maid Park. With a firefighter ID at the box office. 
That had some action on it, and it's a strikeout for Freddy Garcia, number two. I have a feeling that's the splitter that was in action for Freddy Garcia last time out in those eight shutout innings. Yeah, saw a few of those on the highlights from that start, Ash. Uh, you start dealing this thing, and you don't need to be blowing mid 90s with a heater. Good tumbling action. Brady Martinez takes, and that floats up high ball one. He lined out to short in the first inning. Freddie made five starts with Triple A Norfolk before he was promoted to the Orioles. They've used a number of different starting pitchers. It's a one ball, one strike count. Freddie was second in the rookie of the year balloting to Kansas City's Carlos Beltran after his 17 and 8 rookie season with Seattle in 99. Good pick up by Hardy. Two outs. Kevin Eschenfelder brings the heat with special guests and in depth analysis on Sports Talk Live every night at 5 p.m. only on Comcast Sportsnet. Two outs and it's Carlos Corbran who's single to right field in the first inning. Garcia, by the way, has the most career wins for any Venezuelan born pitcher in Major League history 154. In the air foul. But the famous trade in 98 that sent him from Houston to Seattle also included the talented shortstop Carlos Guillen, who, like Freddie Garcia, went on to a lengthy major league career. John Palama was in that deal as well. Andy Johnson was spectacular for two months for Houston. How about that second half, 1998, in the Astrodome? Liner into right field. As they hit for Cork, and he's two for two. Anybody who was here at that time, I have a feeling if they were a baseball fan at all, they were in the seats at the Astrodome. It was 50,000 a game. It was. And it was just as exciting as it gets. It really was. Another Brown kind of destroyed that postseason for the uh, Astros. Kevin Brown was just off the charts as it looked like the Astros might be the team to get to the World Series. 102 games. Set a club record for wins in a season that year. Carlos Pena ripped a two run homer in the first inning. But then, after all was said and done, Randy Johnson moved on as a free agent. And Freddie Garcia, John Halama won a few games for Seattle, and Carlos Guillen just continued for years after that. Jerry Hunsaker said at the time that he knew that this was a lot to give up for Randy Johnson. He realized that the guys he traded would go on to good big league careers. And they have but he said I, even though I felt we would make the playoffs without this trade we just really wanted to go to a World Series in the worst way and we thought this was the time to go for it. For me it was a good deal. Yeah. Now I'm sure you can find a lot of people who, who might feel otherwise when it's all said and done. But. If you've got that shot to get to and win a World Series, I think you take it. And Randy Johnson gave you a great shot. Yeah, he was okay. <laughs> trying to win games, I guess, you know, eat up innings. Yeah, inning eater is what he was. Did you get to face him much? Yeah. <laughs> I, I underlined get to. Yeah. Yeah, that was a real uh, privilege. It was good early. After that, it got a little destructive on my part. <laughs> well, Freddie Garcia joined the White Sox in 04, coming from Seattle. And then the 05 season, he was 14 and 8. He helped the White Sox make postseason play and pitch very well in the postseason. So, when you faced the unit, did you look for anything in particular, or, or were you able to kind of handle? The, the variance of pitches. No. Early on, you were you were <laughs> early, good early. Yeah. Early on, I was well. I was hyper aggressive. I was just a kid. And I, you know, I knew he he was throwing 95 plus. Got a slider from hell, so I was like, I'm sitting on the heater because I didn't want to get to the slider. And he, I was fortunate enough 
to get in a 3-1 count one day. And he, he, fastball found the, the middle of the plate, and I <laughs> drove it over the left field while it was in Arizona. He struck out 14 of us that day and lost in a 2-1 to one game. So it was kind of funny because I hit the home run, and I was scared to death of that guy because I'm running around the bases, and he's, he's looking at me, and he is just screaming at me. He's like, how did a rookie like this hit a home run? I hit a home plate. I mean, I was hunkered down. I've been the only home run trot where I was scared for my life. But, yeah, he was, a, he was a tough guy to face. And every time after that, he absolutely annihilated me with that slider. Trevor Crow bats now. And there's ball one to him. So you let him get away with that stuff? Oh, man, yeah. I had no choice. <laughs> That's beautiful. I'd usually get a fastball up around my neck, and then everything else was a slider, back door, back foot. Yeah, it was not, not enjoyable. That, apparently, apparently he didn't realize who you were early on. <laughs> I don't think anybody did. Fouled away is Steve Johnson again warming up. One ball on strike. Well, a, a lot of things strike us, of course, about that trade. Blummer 98. Blummer the runner at second. Payne the runner at first. A trade was made with about 20 seconds to spare before the deadline. And the Astros didn't know for about five minutes whether they had gotten the phone call made at that time. Someone had to be in New York receiving the phone call that the trade had been agreed to, or it wasn't an official deal. It's all computerized now. Chris Davis with a play. And in the third inning, it's no runs, a hit, two men left. After three, five to one, Houston. Top of the fourth inning, Astros on top five to one, and this pitch by pitch presented by Steel Dealers. I'm going to show you how the Astro pitchers have tried to equalize Chris Davis. We saw him facing the right hander last night. Today it was Dallas Eichel. Talked about not giving him anything to hit in the middle of the zone. You see a lot of pitches last night from Lucas Harrell off the plate. You can see Dallas Eichel working both inside and outside, eventually blowing him up with that almost looked like a cutter on the inner half on Chris Davis. But they've been doing a good job. Stick to that game plan. And with this five to one lead, it's Keiko working inning number four now. And that makes it easier for him to attack a guy like Chris Davis with the four run lead, but it's ball one. Davis grounded out in the first inning. Altuve to his right, scoops it and throws. Just gets the hustling Davis one out. But important to mention on that pitch by pitch too. That was with a runner at second base and first base open. So they were willing to attack Chris Davis. Very good point. I think early in the game that's a very good idea. A bit different when you get into the seventh, eighth, ninth innings. Matt Wieters is the batter. 
Well, we were uh, really enjoying the singing of Danielle Bradbury tonight. She sing the, sang the national anthem, top five semifinalist on NBC's The Voice. And uh, Julie's going to have a chat with her coming up here, Blummer. I and thought they were going to have a sing-off. <laughs> well, maybe they'll do that, too. That'd be impressive. And yeah, my wife and daughters are thoroughly upset that they're not here to witness that. She's from Cypress, Texas, went to Cy Ranch High School. And, uh, she's tweaking the ears of her friend there right now. Probably won't do that on the boys, will she? I definitely don't have to check her here. Anybody else is hearing. She sounds pretty good to me. Yes, she does. Powerful voice. That is one very strong voice. Oh, Great yeah. anthem. 16 years old, they said. 16 years old. She'll be doing the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings after she's on with Julia. I like it. Without mics. Liner and Altuve's position perfectly to retire. Weeders, two outs now. These Astro starters are stringing together the innings. Seven innings for Keichel, his last start. Seven innings for Harrell last night. Eric Bedard went seven Monday night. That's a nice number for a starting pitcher. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Danny Valencia is the batter. New ball one from Dallas Keichel. Dallas, a seventh round pick of the Astros in 09 from Tulsa, went to Arkansas. It's going to be a big weekend for Oklahoma playing LSU in a super regional. With Jonathan Gray, the number one starter for the Sooners. And we'll be hearing his name 24 hours from now. He'll be drafted high by somebody. Maybe the Astros. I like that pitch. Yeah. Whether on or just off that inside edge, that's ideal. Now they say that Gray will touch 100 miles an hour. That pitch right there is the reason that inside pitch is so good. Here you're going to take a peek at Jonathan Gray. He drafted twice already. Yes, he has. High school and junior college. 13th round, 10th round, keeps moving up. He's going to be real high next time he gets drafted. He will be a high first rounder according to all the projections. He might be the first player drafted. I don't care what you say about the new composite bats and things like that. If you got a 159 ERA, you're doing something right. You bet. Here's a stat for you guys. Out of all the players drafted in the draft since 1965 when it started, First players drafted. There's been one Cy Young Award, eight MVP awards, hmm. no Hall of Famers. Wow. Ground ball goes foul. Of course, you've got a couple guys in the pipeline for the Hall of Fame when they become eligible. Ken Griffey Jr. and Chipper Jones. And they would both be locks. There's the order. It starts tomorrow at six. And a lot of fans have been invited to stick around after watching the game. And They'll be able to watch that uh, pre-draft show at 5 o'clock with a 110 start here. And then first pick will be shortly after 6 o'clock. So like the movie Dirty Harry, I got to know. <laughs> I don't remember that being in that movie. Fly ball to center field. Barnes drifting back for this one. And <laughs> it's out number three. And that's seven straight for Keiko. He leads it five to one.
Gorgeous national anthem before the game today by Daniel Bradbury, who's a 16-year-old from Cypress High School, but she's also a semifinalist for NBC's show The Voice, and I'm with her now. And it's been two months since you, you know, Danielle, we're going to wait one second because there's big things happening. Let Brownie have this. Matt Dominguez hits the fourth Astro home run of the night. That's number nine for Matt Dominguez. And it is six to one, and Danielle hit a home run before the game. <laughs> She's the good luck charm, Brownie. But I do have Danielle with me. And you haven't been home in two months because you've been on this show. What was today like? You got one day to come home, see your friends, family. What was it like? I had one day to come home, and we try to cram everything in it. And, and But I, I cherish every moment of everything, and it's so amazing to be home for just a day. Talk about your experience on the show. To get you told me you hadn't done talent shows, you haven't been in any groups, you just sang in your room. You've made it this far on the show. What's that experience been like? I yeah, I've sang in my room. I sang in front of my best friend like every now and then, but I never would really like singing in front of anybody. But I went and auditioned and I made it to the semifinals. <laughs> it's crazy how things work. <laughs> You're on Team Blake. And I know there's a lot of Blake Shelton fans. So what, is, what has it been like working with him and, and getting to know some of these judges, these celebrities? I've been a fan of Blake Shelton since day one. And I, he's so amazing and he's so sweet. And he tells me, like, I got your back. If you need anything, I'm here for you. I'm just like, that is so awesome. And, like, when I'm singing, I look at him and, it, like, he's all singing with me. And just he, he's really cool. And the other coaches are so amazing, too. We've... We got to talk to them a little bit, and it's so awesome. Do you get nervous anymore? You said you hadn't done any of this. You just said that, singing in my room, singing for my friends. Now you're singing on this in front of this national audience. When do you get nervous, if, all, if at all? Before I do get nervous, but once I start singing and getting into the music, I, I all the nerves go away. It's like a miracle, basically. I feel so comfortable on stage. Okay, so what's next for you? Head back and, and then live performances down to the finals, right? Yeah, I head back, a lot of performances in the finals, and I just have to come back with the win. <laughs> and you're a big Astros fan. Oh, yeah, go Astros. <laughs> I love it. Well, thanks so much for being here. Enjoy the rest of your day. Everybody, vote for Danielle, the Astros fan on NBC's The Voice, guys. <laughs> right after you vote for Jose Altuve, That's you can vote for Danielle. <laughs> a lot of voting ahead for us. Meanwhile, Matt Dominguez has hit nine homers in 23 games. Freddie Garcia is just throwing hanging fastballs right down the middle, and Matt Dominguez decided to get in on the action. Blast one. See what kind of fan Danielle is. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Big night here. That's 11 home runs allowed on the year in just about 40 innings for Freddie Garcia, so uh, he, he's giving up a lot of dingers in very little time on the hill. Steve Johnson comes in one and one with a 7.71 ERA for nine and a third innings. And Steve Johnson, uh, by the way, Steve Johnson's dad is one of the broadcasters with the Orioles and uh, not on this trip here working back in Baltimore. We strike one to Marwin Gonzalez. Steve is 25 years old, born right there in Baltimore. Spent eight years in the minors. One ball, one strike. Steve was drafted by the Dodgers in 05. Baltimore got him in a trade in 09. For George Sherrill. I wonder if his dad was uh, in there lobbying the front office for that deal. If it was me, I, I'd be saying probably no. I, I just, I, I think that'd be one of the most difficult things possible you're one of the broadcasters and your son is playing on the team. Yeah. Gonzalez strikes out. Freddie Garcia in three innings allowed seven hits six runs walking two fanning two. I'd be uh, probably saying now oh, you got to trade this guy. He, 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 uh, you can get something for him now the value's up. Brandon Barnes is grounded out and he's walked. 
Maybe they could uh, have a package deal for a broadcaster and a pitcher. You know what? That might not be a bad idea. Back <laughs> to Brandon. Jose Altuve's on deck. But well, we've had managers traded. Right. Wasn't there a, a deal involving a broadcaster? Yeah, Ernie Harwell yeah. was traded for a player, Blummer. Minor leagues. Well, he must have been pretty good. <laughs> That's the case of a broadcaster having a pretty good year, I yeah. guess. Huh? Imagine being, or in this case, the catcher Cliff Dapper was a player, but. Imagine being that player. I might retire after that one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. Oh, wait a minute. You're one of us now. Well, that's uh, one of those stories. If that somebody would, got traded for yeah. me now, they, they quit too. <laughs> that's one of those stories that would change through the years, though. As years go by, you could say, hey, I was traded for Ernie Harwell, guys. Yeah, exactly. And Johnson gets a strikeout. That's two in a row since he came in for Garcia. MLB.TV celebrates 11 years with new low yearly prices. Watch every out of market game live on over 350 supported mobile and connected devices in HD quality with MLB.TV Premium. Visit MLB.TV Baseball everywhere. Altuve's one for two. Looking at ball one. Steve Johnson began this season on the disabled list with a right lat strain. Last year he was 4 0 with a 2.11 ERA for the Orioles. Moves Altuve back. With two balls, no strikes. There are all kinds of draft projections out there. Sports Weekly is projecting Kevin Biggio to be drafted by the Yankees with the 33rd overall pick. Watch out. Gets up into the crowd. Two balls, no strikes. Kevin is thought to be a low first or high second round pick. But your Papa Biz is pretty happy about that. Oh, yeah. There's a drive to left field. Is this number five? Jose Altuve. Five Astro homers. That's his third of the year. And that ties their single game high for this year. And uh, the Astros. Have built their way into a nice lead at 7 to 1. Been a while for Jose, but he got a pitch up right here, and he also have that mojo going for the Astros bats now, and kind of free swinging. Batting, batting practice usually starts around 5 o'clock. <laughs> they extended it here at 30. Jason Castro takes the ball. They hit five long balls at Seattle on April 9th. So once again, they strike. And it's only the fourth inning. Castro hit the first one. Little man with a big swing. Change up coming right back to him. Everybody can get off the panic button now. He's right at 300. Big cut there. Well, they put everything into it, showing everybody. That might get a little something back for that deep drive that was caught by Jones last night in center field. He decided to take matters into his own hands and hit one that uh, no player could make a play on. Three balls and a strike to Jason Castro. And Martinez on deck. And there's a walk to Jason. That's his 17th of the year. Buck Showalter's club came off a nice four and one homestand, winning both games from Washington and two of three against Detroit. The Orioles will be headed for Tampa Bay after tomorrow's finale of this series, while Jeff Blum, Alan Ashby, and the Astros head for Kansas City. Brownie, they're going to feed us so well on that plane. Yeah, what are you hearing? Well, I don't know. I just wanted you to feel a little jealous about things. 
I heard you guys are getting uh, vegetarian meals tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> Ball one. Friday night, you get Jordan Lyles and James Shields. Ooh, that's got a chance of being kind of good. Yes. My oh, goodness. Deep drive. Way up there, and that one bangs off the wall, and that is above the yellow line for another home run. That's number six for the Astros. J.D. Martinez unloads number six himself, and it's yet another two-run shot and three home runs this inning. Is this the Astros hitter saying, we don't need another power hitter? Pick a pitcher in that draft? <laughs> it might be. Good old fashioned American League Baseball. Balls loud off the bat. Sees. Tuck that thing up underneath the rafters. They are hammering away a four run fourth inning, and it's nine to one. Carlos Corporan takes. He's two for two, two singles to right field. A lot of dancing around in the dugout tonight. Been some good vibes in that clubhouse. Broke it up last night, losing that game, but it's good to see him answer back quickly against these Orioles after breaking that six game winning streak. Last time the Astros hit six in a game was August 9, 2006, against Pittsburgh. One ball, two strikes. Aubrey Huff hit two that night. Willie Tavares went deep for a rare homer. Jason Lane, Luke Scott, and Roy Oswalt connecting on that occasion. Tonight, six homers from six different players so far. You can see the love in the dugout. It's great. Yeah. Now three and two. There is nothing like a good laugh for a ball club. Yeah. Good point. You guys have seen a lot of close games recently, right? Have been uh, well pitched games, tight, tough played, and, and so when you get those laughers on your side, uh, they're just wonderful for the club. Well, Johnson came out of the bullpen firing, and he struck out Gonzalez and Barr. And since then, his inning has been spinning for him. A home run by Altuve, walk to Castro, Homer Martinez, walk to Corbin. That alternating home run and walk scenario is uh, not anything any pitcher's interested in. Oh, and you consider he came in and punched out the first two guys he faced. Looked like he was getting off to a good start, but we say it again two out RBIs by the Astros. The Astros came into this game ranked 11th in home runs in the American League with 61. Carlos Pena hit the second long ball of the night. That was a two run shot in the first. And they walked in the third. They strike one to Carlos. And Carlos saw that one an extended amount of time 66 miles an hour on the breaking ball. Oh, oh, oh. What's the slowest pitch you can remember ever seeing? I actually think Roy Oswald threw it to me. It was like a 60 mile an hour breaking ball. That big. Yeah. yeah. Balloon he used to fire up there, and gravity would take over and bring it back in the zone. <laughs> Dave LaRoche, the LaLoff. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Back when uh, he probably flipped it up there about 40 miles an hour. Oh, that is fun. See David Murphy pitching last night for the ring. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yes. Yeah, slow breaking ball in there for a yeah. punch out. Yeah, he did. And got a heated. Argument reaction about that pitch being called a strike it looked like it was right down the middle. <laughs> Tomorrow at 110 here it's Bud Norris and Miguel Gonzalez. Three balls and a strike. It's as if that 6 0 road trip built some esprit de corps among the boys. Nobody joining the Marine Corps, but they are swinging the sticks. <laughs> Got the heavy artillery tonight. Three and two. One of the coaches said, "Well, we were definitely a tired ball club last night." And you know, it's you don't want to use it as an excuse. 
We didn't hear anybody using it as an excuse, but you get two of those in a row, you're not a dark ball club anymore. You're just maybe headed into a slump, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's amazing they allow getaway days on the West Coast at night. Yes. Struck him out. Eight Astros go to the plate. And there's number one, Dominguez. And out to the and Martinez, the bats singing as Danielle was. It's nine to one. It is nine to one Astros on top. The Astros Foundation presents Picnic in the Park Sunday, June 16th. Join the Astros on the field after the 110 game for a player autograph session, free picnic blanket, and a terrific cookout. Get your tickets today by calling 713-259-8851 or email picnic at astros.com. Julia, hopefully J Max will be back for that one. And uh he's pictured there along with his buddies. Playing game two of his rehab assignment at Corpus Christi tonight. Well, the fans have seen quite a show. They've seen six Houston home runs. The club record is seven. That was set in the 2000 season. The Astros played the Chicago Cubs. Dallas Keuchel, the beneficiary of all this offense, has a nine to one lead. Inning number five begins. He's set down seven in a row. It's Steve Pierce batting. That's ball one. You know, we were talking uh, about Dallas. He said uh, it's really helped him to watch Eric Bedard work. And we've seen some similarities between Dallas and Eric, but he also said uh, I picked up some things watching Lucas Harrell last year. How he would pitch inside to the hitters. Strike. So we, we make so much about left-handers learning from left-handers, but. It could work the other way too. Yeah, I kind of wonder if Eric Bedard might not have picked up something from Dallas Keuchel in terms of pace of game. Last time out for Eric, much much quicker rhythm. Okay. That's a strikeout, and it's number two. Well, Lucas Harrell was saying that uh, apparently he's now slowing down the pace of game when he gets in some trouble situations. And he's always had a very quick pace. Now for me, I'll, I'll keep that the defensive players on their toes over on the heels anytime. Anytime. Ball one. Well, yeah, the Matt Dominguez's of the world have made a lot of plays for this pitching staff, so there's a lot to be said for that. But I was also wondering if, if you're just throwing the ball quickly every time and the hits are starting to accumulate, maybe that is a good thought to take a little walk behind the mound. It's not a bad thing to go back there and gather, regroup. Figure out what you're going to do. Take a deep breath and make the right pitch. Yeah, because uh, you know, pitcher's head could be spinning if he gives up five or six hits in a row and just keeps pumping. I'm not saying he's going to pump the ball in the middle, but he's working quickly. Dominguez throws the first two outs, and you know, maybe maybe the thought process needs to be analyzed a little bit there. 
I think you're always looking for that magic bullet for whoever the, the pitcher may be. Find out whatever works. But if you can make a nice pace work, I, I think it helps you get better defense behind you. Yeah. You remember Randy Jones. Boy. Yeah. He had some quick games. Strike one to McLeod. Just talking about him uh, recently about pitchers who didn't throw hard left handers who turned switch hitters around to the other side of the plate. Well he did with Pete Rose. That's it. Liner in the left. Caught on the run by J.D. Martinez. A good play to make it 10 straight. Bird set down by Dallas Keuchel and friends. And it's 9 to 1 Houston. Houston Astros baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you by the new chicken fajita sub only at Quiznos and by Progressive. Visit Progressive.com today. Well the story of this game here in downtown Houston is long balls. The Astros lead at nine to one. They have hit six. Trevor Crow's the batter. Bottom of the fifth inning begins. Steve Johnson throws and there is strike one. Crow is grounded out twice to first base. So Jeff Blum came up with an interesting note. The last time the Astros hit six home runs was that game in 06 against Pittsburgh we mentioned earlier. But we didn't realize that Nate McLeod was playing center field for the Pirates in that game. And now uh, he's in left field, so maybe it's a McLeod kind of karma. Is that what you call the lowest common denominator? <laughs> <laughs> it might be. It's one and two. Yeah, when you do things like this, that many home runs, it's only the fifth inning. Six of them is by six different players, and Brian McTaggart tweeted out that it's only the second time it's happened in club history. All kinds of good stuff going on. Brian McTaggart says that uh, Mark Appel's number one in the Astros draft list. Foul back. I think that's simply because uh, I, I laid out there that I, I thought that. Uh, I always forget his name. Jonathan, Jonathan Gray. Gray with uh, Oklahoma was going to be number one. So I, I think I can shift the tide. Okay. So it's you versus McTaggart <laughs> at 10 a.m. tomorrow down on the field. Oh, I want to see that. I'm going with Mac on that one. Two balls, and two strikes. It's kind of a battling draft expert, so isn't it? As you can read around on Twitter. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Crow strikes out. That's number four. Uh, Jim Bowden, the ESPN analyst, had some thoughts on the Astros pick today. First of all, let's bring you up to date in case you're just joining this on a 9 to 1 ball game with tons of home runs. You can see the distribution there. Now, usually you get to this stage, six home runs in a ball game, and somebody or a couple of somebodies have a pair each, but 
Six different guys in the dingers. That's pretty impressive. Well, when the Astros set their club record of seven in 2000 against the Cubs, Tim Bogart hit two, Richard Hidalgo hit two, Lance Berkman hit two, Darrell Ward hit one. So that's what you're talking about. Or is it? According to Brian McTaggart, Tim Bogart was in on the six home run game oh. also. Julio Lugo, Tim Bogart, Jeff Bagwell, Moises Lou, Lance Berkman, and Chris Truby in August 16th of 2000. Wow. You know, Blummer, one of my favorite memories was being in the seats at Wrigley Field on a day when we were not televising, day off. Of course, Ash was probably broadcasting on the radio. He, he, uh, he, <laughs> he doesn't always, take any days he, off. No, he works every game. Kyle Ripken over here. But Bogart <laughs> hit two home runs that day. Fly ball out to shallow left field. Hardy back. Out number two. And I happened to be just sitting in the seats for something different to do instead of in the press box. And it was a very, very fun experience because about four or five rows in front of me was Tim Bogart's family and all kinds of relatives there. And they were absolutely going nuts. It's a beautiful thing to see. It's good yeah. to see the families get That's involved great. and enjoy that whole process. That's awesome. It really was. I thought maybe you were going to talk about yourself going out to the bleachers in left field, getting a ball and throwing it back. <laughs> no. Showing no. off that arm again, Brownie. That's taking your life in your hands going out there. <laughs> ball one to Gonzalez. You were the guy with the shirt off and the face paint, huh? You, do you remember? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Making was, beer runs. All right, okay. All right, I'm busted. <laughs> I thought I recognized that guy. Now, do you do you remember the game, uh, the the last game of the '95 season? The Astros were in Wrigley playing the Cubs, and Randy Myers on the mound, and a uh, fan jumped out of the stands and ran out to confront him after he gave up a home run to an Astro. Yes. How wild was that? There's a clubhouse somewhere that has. <laughs> Photo, photographic evidence of that. And it was extremely frightening. Yes. Wasn't that the guy that just got clocked? I yeah. think he got Randy clocked. took it to him. Yeah, Randy, Randy, Randy clocked him. him. Yeah. Yes. And he's lucky that uh, Randy didn't pull out one of those grenades he kept in his locker. <laughs> what? <laughs> yep. Are you kidding? Me? No. Well, it wasn't live. No, it wasn't live. Oh my gosh. No, but but he had him in his locker. <laughs> Struck him out. And after five, it is nine to one. The Astros. Yeah. Welcome back to Astros baseball Astros on top nine to one in the top of the sixth inning and inside the lines is brought to you by Scotch blue painters tape Scotch blue see what you can do. And no grenades being played here at third base dueling third baseman a great barehanded play by Machado. Dominguez returns the favor on a solid backhand play and a good throw across the diamond and Altuve getting in on some of the strong defense giving Adam Jones a taste of his own medicine right there taking away a base hit. Quite a night for the Astros so far. They lead it nine to one. As Dallas Keifel works the sixth inning, Manny Machado taking strike one. What are you guys doing? Set the all-time record for the word grenade used in a <laughs> well, broadcast? Yes, we're uh, we've been checking <laughs> the record book. <laughs> yes. Got six six bombs here tonight. Why not throw a grenade in there? Okay. 
One ball, one strike. Manny Machado's among the youngest players in the majors right now, but he's not the youngest. Bouncer Matt Dominguez spins, throws and gets him. And Machado twice has grounded to Dominguez tonight. You know, Matt Dominguez can make it look so easy, but this is not an easy play as you get pushed back as a third baseman. Then the 360 involved, and just as easy as could be. It's just not normal for a third baseman to have to do a 360 like that. Usually you don't have enough time to do that, but nice big hop. And you see the angle he took going back to create that longer hop, make it an easier hop to read and play. Does everything right down there. Yeah, he uses the feet nicely to get in good positions. Hardy takes a look at that one. One on one. So yeah, interesting point. We've seen second baseman do that when they're maybe a, a guy's on first and the ball's hit to their left. They want to spin around and throw back to second. Blummer. Yep. Not as easy when you got to throw it all the way across the diamond. That's a rocket, but it goes foul. You see Kenny down there take off running like. So that's Kenny tonight, right? Kenny? I can't keep up with these guys. Blummer knows every one of the ball boys and girls in the major leagues. He heads up play. He wanted nothing to do with that thing. It was a bullet. Good jump by Kenny. Kenny's a player. Jonathan Singleton has a hit and an RBI for Corpus Christi tonight. There's a roller out to second. Altuve on to first. And the ground ball out has been Kaiko's specialty in recent starts. By the way, at the start of play tonight, you know the Orioles are leading the major leagues in home runs at the start of play tonight. And you get that word that there's going to be this load of home runs in the ballgame. You might be inclined to think, boy, the Orioles are going to have a feast. But you know, these Astros bats now with that six game winning streak and and uh, just the way it's all seemingly coming together. Well, you bring up a point worth noting nine to one game, six homers for the Astros. So the attention swings to that. But on the other side of the field, one run on three hits through five and two thirds. Dallas Keiko keeping these birds spellbound. And uh, this powerful club came in third in run scored in the American League. Pops some total bases. So the pitcher should get his share of credit, too. Well, he should. And he's starting to turn in quality start after quality start. This is his sixth start this year. That one goes on the ground into right field. So Jones takes it the other way on the 0-2 pitch. And that sets it up for Chris Davis to bat. Uh, coming into the ballpark today, uh, Travis Blackley was pointing out that uh, Dallas Keuchel has worked in long relief. He's become a starter. You've had uh, Paul Clements who's been a starter in the minor leagues. He stretched it out in long relief for the Astros, but he's now used in shorter stints. So the Astros have had uh, a lot of availability in different ways for these guys who have come out of the bullpen. And I think the plan all along was to keep these relievers available to turn into starters, as Keiko has done. And you've got Edgar Gonzalez, who's been a long man, but he could start if needed. So probably more flexibility on this staff. Ashton, I can actually remember for many a year in terms of uh, multiple innings from relief guys. That's out to right center field. Davis with Barnes coming over to his left, getting it back into second base, has a single, sending Jones to third base. Davis now one for three. This thing about good hitters, it's, it's hard to hold them down for a, a long time. Anyway, uh, we got a, a bullfrog getting in on our broadcast yes. tonight. I yes. Think. Well, we're very close to the bayous. And, uh, you know, for you guys, though, <laughs> there's, we're just having fun. I'm new to this. Okay. We're all new to this. But Good here, grief. how about this for a road trip? Ash. See that button right there? The I'm red right. one? <laughs> this one? Well, <laughs> well, now that I'm the color of your shirt right now, I appreciate that, guys. <laughs> Come on, guys, get that out. Here we go. Right, okay. <laughs> Good grief. It's all right. getting hot in here, huh? Come on down to the field. Oof. Yes. Hey, how about the way we all wore different color shirts tonight? No, that was Quality work. Even, Salty vets. Not even take a phone call. Matt Wieters looks at ball one. Wieters is over two. But how about this this road trip for you guys? You know, you go out west, you go Colorado and Anaheim, come back here for two and a half days, 
Now you're going to be off to Kansas City and Seattle. Is there an end in sight to all these long trips? I hope so. Well, yeah, that's uh, I guess my response too. I don't know um, but the Astros the way they play on the road. Do they really? They don't mind so much. Well, after no. that last road trip, they're 12 and 16 now on the road. That's pretty respectable. Yeah, you play for the split on the road and win at home. Mm -hmm. Nine and 22 at home though. Yeah, they they played well against Kansas City here in Houston. Got a chance to go up there three against the Royals and then go up to Seattle. They they actually swung the bats extremely well in the cold up there earlier. Well, let's see what lies ahead for our nomadic bunch. One more game with Baltimore here. Three in Kansas City, three in Seattle. Back home against the White Sox. With all these home runs, you look at that Seattle series and what the Astros did there. First go around out there, there's some bombs being hit. You know, Chris Carter has already got his bags packed for that trip. <laughs> After that series he had, there's a shot foul. Now here's something, too, with this 9 and 22 home record. The Astros have struggled to score runs at home this year. This might be their best offensive game of the year at home. Watch Adam Jones. Woo. It's a tough spot to be in with a big right handed hitter. I, uh, yeah, I'm not sure Adam was convinced all the way that he was safe. No. That's a walk to load the bases. Back on the 24th of April, the Astros beat Seattle here 10 to 3. That's their best game to date at home. They're winning 9 to 1 now in the sixth inning, but the bases are loaded with Valencia coming up. Doug Brokeo goes out. 95 pitches for Dallas Keuchel. Uh, Bo Porter said probably everybody tonight is available in the bullpen other than Josh Fields. Paul Clemens out there getting loose, but Astros starters have up their outings by at least an inning earlier in the season. They were only going about 4.9. Now they're they've got to be up or over six innings as, as a starting group over the last two weeks. Yeah, that's a good point. And uh, Mike Stanton was talking about that yesterday on the pregame show or the postgame show or one of those shows. But the starters ERA since May 15th is 3.26. Nice. I think part of the message right there from Doug Brokale could have been look you're, you're down to getting one more out right right now because he could be done after this inning. So ramp it up and uh, come right after this guy and see if you can get that big out that you need. Well, let's see a bats. Curveball is working for strike one. Let's see a double to right and hit a fly ball to center. Keiko moved into the rotation May 10th here against Texas. Pitched well, but he got no decision. He's won two and lost one in that starter's role. 0 oh 2. You know, the Astros with their starters ERA 5.26. Coming into this game, that wouldn't attract very much positive attention around the major leagues. But the way it's come down here over the last three weeks, and we're seeing six and seven innings a night from these guys. It's been a definite uptick. They desperately needed it. These first 40 games are getting pretty rough. Sure. It's a lot of expectation put on your offense and your bullpen. Keiko with Corcoran coming out has the 0-2 pitch coming. Dallas, 25 years old. He was three and eight for the Astros last year with a 5.270 RA. It's one and two. The Astros will be going to Baltimore in late July, I believe. I think that's a Baltimore, Toronto, Minnesota trip. It's four games in Toronto, isn't it? I believe so, Ash. That's like dropping pins on a map with those uh, three cities yeah. not being very close together at all. Now two and two. Dallas trying to come off speed, utilizing the changeup quite a bit. They are going to make sure between Keichel and Corporon they get their message straight. 
Is he concerned about that runner at second? Is that why he's calling the catcher out and taking care of things verbally? It certainly could be the case. And Jeff and I have felt like on a number of occasions lately, certainly on the recent trip, that the Astros employed that concern numerous times. Okay. Big pitch for Dallas Keiko in the sixth inning. No runs, two hits, three men stranded for Baltimore, and Houston leads it nine to one. Welcome back. Bottom six. It's 9-1 Astros. Brandon Barnes up first for the Astros here. And he hasn't hit a home run yet for the Astros. Out of the norm. But last night he did hit one. He gave them the, their only run in the loss against the Orioles. And it was off Chris Tillman, who's a righty. And I say that because he's known as a lefty specialist. It has been this year. And he's trying to get his numbers up versus righties to keep a spot in the everyday lineup. I asked him about it. He was like, it's just a matter of getting at bats against the righties. He's starting to feel more comfortable with this. Well, he's one of three Astros who has not hit a home run, as you point out, Julia. <laughs> Strike one. It's uh, Barnes is 0 for 2 with a walk. Oh, the shame of it. Yeah, and the shame of uh, Carlos Corcoran, 2 for 2 with a walk, no home runs. And Trevor Crow 0 for 3. So they're the guys who are really feeling the pressure in this ballgame. <laughs> To left field. Let's see if it can turn left a little bit. No home run, but an extra base hit. And that's a double for Barnes, his sixth of the year. We need to get a look at this swing, and I know we will. When he gets aggressive and takes this good hack, he has great success. He's a guy that can drive the baseball. The cement mixer out over the plate. But when he gets extended, that ball goes. That was a line drive off the left field wall. Two base hits for Brandon. Some of his swings are so impressive. And yeah, you want to see that all the time, but if you can come up with that double swing and the home run ball occasionally and play a great center field, which Brandon can do, well, he could be very valuable. Troy Patton is warming up in the bullpen while Orbit has just totally gone south on us. Ball one strike. Jose Altuve is two for three with a homer. What has possessed Orbit to get into that routine? We haven't seen that from Orbit before. That's Luke foul, and it's one and two. I don't think Jose barreled this one up. No, he didn't. And Orbit's in some oh, trouble man here. Down. Man down. 
We're going to need some assistance very quickly. He's going to pull something. Hamstring? What's that? Oh, it could be any number of things. He's going to take it out on that guy. Check swing call, and it's two and two. <laughs> That's a massive amount of salad to try to lift up there <laughs> over that rail. What is happening? <laughs> I apologize. It's my fault. It looks like a moving shrub. <laughs> Three and two. <laughs> I would like to <laughs> Oh, oh boy. Yeah, it's hot here now. I'm telling you. <laughs> Can you imagine trying to do that without the costume on, let alone with it on? Orbit looks like my broadcasting skills right now. Run all over the place uh, and doesn't know what to do with it while you're there. Fly ball over field nine. The crowd coming over for it into the corner on the warning track. Number one. That sounded like a broken bat to me. It did. I believe it was. Now Jason Castro will be the batter. But maybe a pitch and change first. The lefty Troy Pattinson warming up. Buck Showalter's on his way to get Steve Johnson. And Patton, the lefty from Tomball, Texas, will be coming in. It's nine to one. The Astros have ten hits in this ball game. They've banged out six home runs. And that's the most they've hit in the game since the 06 season. Pitcher number three is on his way, and we'll be back to tell you more in just a moment. Astros. We want to remind you to tune in to Chevy Hometown Kids every Saturday morning at 9.30 on CSN. Chevy Hometown Kids, where it's not about the score, but the experience. Yes. Thanks, Julia. Troy Patton comes in. And he's back close to home. He was raised in Tomball, Texas. Troy was drafted by the Astros in the ninth round at 04. Traded to Baltimore after the 07 season, along with Luke Scott, Matt Albers, Dennis Sarfate, and Michael Costanzo for Miguel Tejada. He's 1 0 with a 4.62 ERA. 23rd appearance on the year. Not a few more hits than innings pitched. And he's allowed four home runs, so go get him, guys. Left hand hitters are hitting 341 off of him. Throws that one for strike one to Castro. Castro has a two run homer and a walk in this game. It's a tough angle presented right there for the left hand hitters. Yeah, sure is. A little surprised to see that left handed average and then that delivery. Mm -hmm. A little bit of Frank Tanana from years gone by. Barnes is on at second with one out in the sixth inning. He doubled. 
Stanton has retired the first batter he's faced 15 out of 22 times. It's two and one. Troy was born in Magnolia, Texas, went to Tomball High School. Came to the big leagues uh, for three games with the Astros in 07 before the trade took him to Baltimore. Last year he pitched 54 times with good numbers for Baltimore last season. Two and two. You know, the Astros gave up a ton of talent. Luke Scott has had some good years, Matt Albers. But Miguel Tejada played well here. It was one of those deals you, you give up five for one. That's a very risky deal for a general manager, Ed Wade in this case, to make. But Tejada really did well here. Astros down on strikes. And I would say at a time of his career where there was no guarantee that he would do well, a guy that really has thrown together a great career. Yes. The Astros will host a 2013 draft party following tomorrow's 110 game with the Orioles. Fans are invited to stick around to watch the 2013 draft live on the big screen, as well as hear exclusive interviews from Astros GM Jeff Luno, Astros scouts, and more. Call 1 877 9 Astros or visit Astros.com to get your tickets now. Hey, you guys are going to be here for that, aren't you? In spirit. Okay. We'll be thinking about you, Bronny. Make, make sure and let us know immediately. We'll tweet how you. the picks go. Yeah, we need live tweets. And I don't know if we have Wi-Fi on our plane, but I think we've got TVs. Can you may be able to pick it up. Tweet it 35,000 feet. Yeah, we're going to do it. We have uh, special communications through the pilot to you guys. Well, I bet you uh, that will be going on. Some mile high tweeting. That'd be interesting. Well, you can still watch uh, the MLB Network on. Plane, right? Yes, yes, we can. All right, so you can follow it that way. There will be absolutely no need for any tweeting whatsoever. And they'll do a wonderful job of covering that. They'll be on the air actually at 5 o'clock Central Time with a one hour preview show. And that'll be about the time you guys sink into your seats and have that nice salad. Thanks for the encouragement. <laughs> <laughs> they're loading. They're loading some avocados on there for you guys. Also, actually, that would work. Yeah, just, that's pretty good. Yeah. Just for an extra treat. California boys here. Yeah, I was waiting for an orbit reference. <laughs> two balls, and two strikes. Nice job of spoiling. Yep. Well, this has been a fertile area. Developing a lot of major league talent down through the years. Troy Patton, a part of that. Troy, 27 years old. And you add to the mix with the Cole Stewarts and the Kevin Biggios and the Clemens and the Pettits coming along in this year's draft. It's going to be fun to see where those guys go. Three balls, two strikes. College players as well. Foul tip strikeout and Patton gets Castro and Martinez to end the Astros sixth inning with a score nine to one Houston.
Top seven Astros on top nine to one. So we're going to bring you a pitch by pitch presented by Steel Dealers. It's going to show you Dallas Keuchel's ninth. Another quality start from the young man going six innings giving up five hits only one earned run. Doing a good job pretty effective working that inside corner but turned himself into a ground ball pitcher. He's done a good job of busting guys in having some guys fight off some ground balls and then he comes back with some of the off speed over that outside corner to get the ground ball and sometimes even a strikeout. Good night for the young man. Ten ground ball outs for him out of the 18. Now Paul Clemens takes over with a three and two record of 4.32 ERA. Paul was saying yesterday, well, it's the longest rest I've had between appearances all year. All his last appearance was May 31st against the Angels. Been doing a great jo job dominating not only the right hand hitters, but primarily the left hand hitters. Steve Pierce looked at one for ball one. Pierce has struck out twice tonight. Shot backhanded out to And the tag attempt missed him and he got in safely. Carlos Pena tried to tag Pierce, but Pierce got under the tag and then was able to snake into first base. I think Jose Altuve, upon reflection, might possibly realize anyway that planting the right foot might be the, the more sound way right at this point. But well, I'll tell you what, he can make that play on the move. Now, I was going to say the same thing as you got a little cavalier on that throw yep. right there and I think right there he realized the fact that. He had a bad choice. Carlos Pena did what he could but Steve Pierce did a great job of reading the throw and going down into that slide to avoid the tag. Yeah, I think any time you can plant and still have time to make the play it's probably the better option. That's out to right center field. Hit well by Casilla. Extra bases will score the run. To make it nine to two Casilla is still turning to third. He's going to make it there easily with an RBI triple for Casilla. First triple for Casilla this season. That's RBI number three for him. He could scoot. He was running pretty good. Jumped on that first pitch fastball. Usually when pitchers are, have a big lead, they'll be aggressive with the fastball early in the count. Alexi Casilla. Got one he likes, tore a line drive into that right center field gap going all the way to the wall. And with that play on Altuve, allows Steve Pierce to get on base and score on that triple. I think these are, are rather tough, sometimes dangerous outings for a pitcher. You've got the big lead tendency to just come in and throw a lot of fastballs, find a lot of plate. I think you have to pitch like you would pitch in any circumstance. McLeod cracks one up to right field. Going back on a Trevor Crow. Here's the tag. And the score to make it nine to three. Going back to the ball hit by Pierce, that was ruled a single by Steve Pierce. And now two runs have come home in the inning as the sacrifice fly gives McLeod his 13th run batted in. And this one's a little bit this outing for Paul Clemens is unlike the one he had in Seattle where he just came in firing fastballs. That was a huge lead by the Astros. And he gave up a couple home runs in that outing. And I agree with you, Ash. He's got to come in. He's been here long enough that he needs to come in here and pitch as, as opposed to throw. He's got a great fastball. That one at 96, but at the same time, Major League hitters, they know how to dial it up for that heat. Especially this ball club in Baltimore. These guys can swing it. 15,526 the paid attendance, including those folks. It's 0 2 for Paul Clemens, who got a win in Colorado on that road trip. He came in with a game tied 2 2 in the seventh inning. Pitched in the 6 3 win at Angel Stadium. That's in for a strike, and Machado's probably two outs. Dropped a big hook on Manny Machado. He's got a good one. Buckled him and put him away. J.J. Hardy bats next. He's one for three in RBI. His first time up on a single.
On this date in 1969, Houston selected J.R. Richard with the number two overall pick in the draft. The number two pick? Yep. Yeah, I'm trying to figure Who's out. before him? Yeah. Um, let's see. 69. Don't remember offhand. Yeah, if JR could go number two, that's a pretty strong draft. So the guy in front has got to be pretty good. Jeff Burroughs? Not bad. 69, yeah, that would be Jeff Burroughs. Okay. What year? Is that your year? No, no. When did you get Well, drafted? actually, yes. I But but I think it could have been the winter. They had two drafts back in those days. Oh, I did not know that. Winter and summer. I need to look close more closely at that one. Ash was playing Alaskan baseball in the winter and they really liked the way he set up behind the plate. So <laughs> he went in the winter draft that year. Are you talking about that plate with the, uh, the fish on it though? <laughs> well back. It'd be a tough league in the winter. <laughs> no, I'll tell you the reason I remember the 69 and the split draft. Uh, one of the guys I grew up with, uh, a kid by the name of Joe Levito. Turned out being the number two pick of that draft, the Washington Nationals took him in the winter draft. Ted Williams got him and said he was going to be the, the next Mickey Mantle. Didn't quite work out that way. But uh, Jeff Burroughs was the other guy from the Long Beach area. We were in, in that same, the other side of the harbor out there. And uh, Jeff was the, the phenom at the time with his great power. And of course, he turned out to be a heck of a major league hitter. Big home run hitter. Atlanta and Texas. That's a shot to left field. JJ Hardy into his home run trot. That's number 13 for him. And the birds get a deep one for the first time tonight. That's their 83rd of the year for the American League leading team. Well, this is kind of who JJ Hardy is. He's a an outstanding defensive shortstop makes all the routine plays doesn't make mistakes and with the bat he will sting you with long balls. It's not a real high average but he can drive the home run and driving some runs too. Well look now but you got a five run ball game. I think that removes some stucco off the wall out there in left field. That was smoked. Nine to four ball game now. Jeff Burroughs win number one in that 69 season for the Washington Senators. After J.R. Richard, Ted Nicholson went to the White Sox. Randy Sterling to the Mets. Alan Bannister to the Angels. Mike Anderson to the Phillies. This, this shows you what a crapshoot the draft is. Now I got a chance to see a, a little of Mike Anderson. Back in those days, he was a good-looking outfielder. He was. You know, some guys don't wind up having long and distinguished careers in the major leagues, but there was a load of talent that you just ran through right there. Did you play with Charlie Spikes, Ash? Did play with Hard Charlie in, in Cleveland. Oscar Gamble, you uh, referred to him as Hard Charlie. Oh. Adam Jones is strike one. Oscar Gamble would not shut up. And it's three in the morning, four in the morning. <laughs> you're on the bus or the plane. Oscar was yapping. And you'd hear Hod Charlie going on all the time. And it was it was just incredible. He would not be a good roommate. No, nah, he'd be a horror. Well, you would have loved him on, on the flight from Anaheim, yeah, huh? On the same floor with him, you were gonna get crushed. Oh boy. Balls, two strikes to Adam Jones. Oscar Gamble, a guy that was known for the hair back then, but yeah. you know what? He could he could swing that stick. Rock him out. Three runs come across in the seventh inning, including a hardy home run. Now the Astros come up in the bottom of the seventh. Let's see if they can do some more whacking. It's nine to four, Houston.
time to present our progressive fan of the game with this awesome goodie bag. And it's the guy to my right, Marcus Moore, who doesn't need any more goodies because in the second inning, they came over and said, if an Astros player hits a home run, you win the second inning slam and you get a free Denny's Grand Slam a week for a year. Marcus, what were your thoughts on winning this? I was like, I was so happy when they hit the home run, when they hit it, my hands are in the air, Scott. I was so happy to get a free meal for a week. Oh, man, that's great. That's all things tomorrow in Gonzales. Did you have any idea coming in today you'd be a winner of some Grand Slams? No, I didn't. I was surprised when they sat right behind me and told me that. I was like, oh, my God. I was excited then. What do you think of this home run derby you got tonight? Oh, I'm loving it. Way to go, Astro. Way to go. <laughs> He doesn't know this, but I'm going to try to walk off with this golden ticket I have in my hand right here, guys. <laughs> I'm going to say, I know you're probably going to fight him for that, Julia. <laughs> you guys are good enough friends now to share that, aren't you? I know. I told him he's taking me out. His, his wife agreed. Hit number three of the night for Carlos Corporan. He continues his perfect evening. Three singles and a walk for Carlos. We'll take a seven-game hitting streak on to his next one. We were talking about Oscar Gamble. Wow. Was Oscar. Yeah, that was right after a haircut, as I recall. Yeah, did he take his hand off and sound like this? <laughs> Just a big pop. Yeah. Holy Toledo. Yeah. He was the uh, he was the leader in the hair department back in those days. And the, the cap just kind of perched uh, somewhere precariously on top of that. Did he have to wear a helmet when he hit? I think he did. Had a lot of protection. Carlos Pena, the batter. Fun Pena. team at it. Me. Was he? Oh, absolutely. Travis Blackley's working for Houston. Pena hit one of those two run homers in the first. Who was the, the best teammate you ever had in terms of uh, just a guy who was fun to be around? Just fun. Oscar was one. Uh, Jose Cruz was certainly another. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jose was, you know, he, he was really quite amazing. Adam Jones gives way to Nate McLeod. The thing about Jose Cruz was he was a great player. And, you know, we had that 1980 season where we had a three game lead with three games to go in the season, had to go out to LA. The Dodgers beat us three straight. And we had to play one more, number 163 on the year. And I wondered as we came to the park what the attitude, the mood was going to be in, and how it was going to proceed. And, and how it went was Jose Cruz got up on a table and danced for everybody made us all laugh out of our minds and we went out there and laughed our way into a, a big victory and it was just the ideal way for that club to hit the field that day. Trevor Crow looks at ball one and then Art Howe hit that big home yep. run, of course off Dave Gillis. You have to come through but it, it was a nice loose atmosphere and Jose was the guy that was really responsible for providing that. You ever hear that story about Art Howe and that home run he hit? I was there. I'm not sure I know the story you're referring to. <laughs> Land driver to right field. A hit for Trevor Crow. He joins in the hitting parade. And the Astros continue to mash. 11 hits tonight. They get 12 hits now. Every Astros reach base in this game. And Matt Dominguez comes up. Well, let me hear about Artie. Well, Art was at the plate and he had two strikes on him. And Dave Gold dropped that big curveball on him. Up the curve was yep. And uh, Doug Harvey was the home plate umpire. And let's see who the catcher was. Uh, Joe Ferguson, the catcher. Does that sound right? Yes. All right. And that pitch came in, and Ferguson thought it was strike three. Doug Harvey's his ball. Ferguson jumped up. He went crazy. And when he settled down again, Harvey said, no, it's a ball. It's a little bit high. Art Howe looked back at him. Harvey said, gentlemen, that missed by a quarter of an inch. Deep drive, and here's Jones way back in center field. That ball's off the wall. Extra bases hit for Dominguez. And here's a play at the plate. Two run scores. It's cut off. Dominguez is being run back by Davis and tagged out. But Corcoran and Crow were able to get home. And the Astros now go up 11 to 4. On the two run double by Dominguez, that gives him. Three runs batted in tonight, 32 for the year. He crushed that one. That's the way you respond when the other team starts coming at you. And especially as Blummer was talking about this great offensive Orioles club. Terrific response.
Early in the season, the Astros had a tough time responding, also had a tough time getting those shutdown innings after they scored some runs. But the Astros are coming out here and laying it on thick. Boy, they are banging away tonight. So Domingo got his 10th double of the year. And uh, Barbara may have felt uh, the hot breath of Crow on his neck as he scored that run because Trevor wasn't far behind him. There's a hot shot into center field. And Marlon Gonzalez has a two for four nine. So that's four hits in the inning allowed by Pat. So anyway, back to the story. And uh, first of all, here's Matt Dominguez hit. This ball's crushed out to this part of the ballpark. We found out last night he got to hit it pretty good to get it over Adam Jones's head, and that ball was hit well enough that Adam Jones just put his head down and tried to play it off the wall. A runner at first and two outs. That's Brandon Barnes. Ball one. So uh, that curveball came in. It was high. Ferguson went nuts. Harvey said, "No, it's a ball." And Art How looked back, and uh, Doug Harvey said, "Artie, I wouldn't take that pitch again." <laughs> <laughs> and Goltz threw the curveball again. And Art hit it out of the park. And then he winked at Harvey as he crossed home plate. <laughs> Pierce over with the grab. And after seven, the Astros lead it 11 to four. Spectacular alien themed fireworks show presented by Marathon Oil. Call 1 877 9 Astros or visit Astros.com to get your tickets today. ET will make an appearance. Alien themed. Yeah. There you go. Travis Blackley comes in from the Astros bullpen to work the eighth inning. Paul Clemens in one inning allowed three hits, three runs with no walks. He struck out two. Dallas Keuchel in six innings allowed five hits one run two walks three strikeouts through 100 pitches now Blackley with no decisions has an ERA of 3.43. And he was saying today uh, that this bullpen camaraderie is really building and kind of reminds him of that Oakland bullpen last year. And he was a part of a very unusual Oakland team that was never in first place until after the final game of the season last year. What an amazing run they uh, went on the Oakland A's. That's some kind of show they put on. Foul ball by Chris Davis. You should go thank the Astros starters for allowing them to hang out a little bit longer with each other out there. Yeah. Travis worked a scoreless inning Sunday against the Angels. We got hold number nine of the year. So he's been in there in some very much tighter situations than this seven run lead. No balls, two strikes. Plus 
mostly right work from the left handed side in last night's game and Josh Fields was the only other reliever who worked behind Lucas Harrell's seven innings. One ball one strike. Weeders on deck. Blue Jays shut out the Giants today for nothing. R.A. Dickey got the win over Barry Zito and Casey Jensen got his 12th save. He could turn the radar guns off in that game. <laughs> you, don't, sundial. you don't like looking at uh, <laughs> 76 miles an hour in that. Well, no, R.A. Dickey actually is is a guy that allegedly throws a real hard knuckleball. So low 80s maybe. Well, so he could match Zito's fastball with his fast knuckleball. That's fine. You say Barry Zito actually at one time threw pretty good gas, huh? I faced him when he was throwing low 90s with that curveball. He's pretty much unhittable. So the one ball, two strike count. I watched him in postseason last year, the World Series, and he was unhittable. And I was trying to figure out the whole time how he was pulling that off, flipping stuff up there. His career seemed to be in jeopardy just yeah. a few years ago. Cubs and Angels are tied 5 5. Bottom of the ninth in Anaheim. That's a rock down the line toward the right field wall. It hits off the base of the wall, kicks straight back toward the infield hard, and Davis is into second base. Looked like it hit. Where that padding ends, and it's probably cement there at the base of it. It just kicked hard back toward the infield. Well, we've had a lot of balls hit really hard tonight, but I think that might have been the noisiest sounding shot of the night. I was kind of curious to see that too, Brownie. You don't see that. I mean, you've seen a ton of games here at Minute Maid. That was one of the rarest bounces off that right field wall I've seen. It really was. Well, these guys uh, hit. And score well from the seventh inning on to the tune of number one in the majors. Yeah, don't take a nap on these guys or think you've got them put them away. You've got to keep pitching. Mark Walters battling birds have nine hits and four runs, and Matt Weeder's the batter. He's over two with a walk. Center field. Brandon Barnes watching, and that one hits way up. And that's a two run homer by Weeders. Number eight of the year for Weeders, giving him 34 runs batted in, and it's 11 to 6 now. Yeah, take nothing for granted on these Baltimore Orioles. You don't want to panic as the Astros in this inning. But considering the numbers we just saw and the way these two guys have let off this inning, there's nobody out here in the top of the eighth inning. Two runs have already scored, and you're up by five, even with an 11 runs on the board. What is going on in this ballpark tonight? They filled it with helium. Yeah. Now Valencia bats. Ball one to Valencia who has a double and three trips. Nobody out here in the eighth inning with two runs home on the Weeders blast. I think we should bring back the humidor from Colorado. <laughs> two and oh. That thing's been working up there apparently. Yeah, it was crazy to go in that series and have two low scoring games like yep. the Astros did. This game tonight is more like turning back the clock to 2000 in this ballpark, the first year it opened. <laughs> 3 0 now. Diamondbacks and Cardinals are tied 1 1. They're in the top of the sixth in St. Louis. Padres 1, Dodgers nothing. Bottom of the second in the Yasiel Puig era. That's what it is in LA now, isn't it? Wow. Has he ever come on the scene? He's taking the city by storm so far. There's a guy that's been playing double A ball. Valencia draws a walk. Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and New Mexico viewers, listen up. Comcast Sportsnet covers the entire five-state region, and we want your story ideas. 
Email us your ideas at regionalroundup at comcastsportsnet.com. Josh Fields is warming up for Houston. Steve Pierce is the batter. Pierce reached on the infield hit in the seventh inning and came around on the triple by Casilla. Fields throwing in the bullpen as Pierce comes around for the fourth time. That's ball one. Royals are up on the Twins four to one. They're in the bottom of the seventh. Astros hit Kansas City Friday night. It's Lyles and Shields. Saturday night, Bedard and Santana. Sunday, Harold and Mendoza. And a pretty good chance as you get a strike call there on the appeal. But you guys will have a George Brett signing while you're in town. Maybe get a chance to talk to him about that pine tar incident. Yeah, he's the hitting coach now, the interim hitting coach of the Royals. He did not want the job except on that basis. I haven't seen that incident for so long. Really? Yeah. Well, we had played it six days in a row on the road. Yeah. It worked out pretty good. We didn't see it yesterday. That's what happened. It's been at least a day. We found the key, the guys. See it. That's what it was. Found the key. And you know we got plenty of time to talk about it with Blackley on the mound. Yeah. Blackley was telling me he faced uh, Edgar Gonzalez in uh, winter ball in Mexico. And Edgar was throwing 96. Were they using the winter ball gun? I don't know. The regular season gun. But he used to throw really hard. Is there an exchange rate down there? <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> Julio Tehran of the Braves shut out the Pirates 5 0. Seeing Wandy Rodriguez who left with an injury. Seemed to be around his left elbow area or forearm when he came out of the game. It's off his leg foul. And so that's got to be scary for Clint Hurdle because Wandy's a big part of that club, and that club has done exceptionally well. Still trying to finish above 500. Yeah. Pirates got only one hit. I believe it was a pinch hit by Brandon Inge in the eighth inning. Did you? Uh, Hear about what he did. I don't know if it was this year or maybe last year. He showed up in uh, full hockey gear at the ballpark. Inge? Yeah. Swing and miss. What was that all about? Well, everybody's into the Stanley Cup playoffs. Hey, there's uh, George Brett. Well, he's coming. Yeah, bring your ruler. Oh, wait, we got home plate. I love nettles, man. Yeah, we got him, guys. All right. Who was the next hitter due up? Oh, my goodness. He stood remember. at the plate at the beginning of that scene. Couldn't, uh, and, couldn't tell. And none of us ever noticed how McCray was standing there. Okay. I've got, sure. go. I've got issues with the Bat Boy. you got to go out there and grab that thing and throw it up the tunnel so they can't find it. <laughs> Alexi Casilla, the batter. There's Franco. Well, that uh, the call was overturned, though. Home run stood. Uh, technicality. Yeah. No. Yeah. Home plate is an unofficial ruling device. Yeah, so, <laughs> one ball, one strike. Cole Hamill struck out 11, and the Phillies beat the Marlins six to one. Dominic Brown hit his 18th. Hamels is now two and nine. One of the Phillies is vying for the home run lead. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> that wouldn't have been the first one that came to mind, would it? Howard, ugly. 
One ball and two strikes. Yankees swept the Indians six to four. Or was their winning score today? Sabathia beating Kluber. Travis Hafner hit his tenth. Brett Gardner number six. They have Teixeira back in the lineup now. He's hit a couple of homers. But they may not get a rod back. You think? Don't know. Inside for a ball. Two and two. Joe Girardi was just peppered with questions uh, during his press conference today about Alex Rodriguez. He handled it very well. He said that that issue is not for us to decide. And I talked to Alex about baseball and recovering from his injuries, and that's all we talk about. Three and two. Talk about being a pressure cooker every day. Manage the Yankees. My goodness, yeah. And then you add characters like A Rod into the mix and it just <laughs> keeps piling on. <laughs> exactly. It's hard enough just being interviewed about the game each night. Yeah, he's got to comment on personalities and off field issues. All the injuries they've had, he's had to deal with all that. That's a walk. To see up, or it's a second walk at the end, bringing up McLeod. You know, sometimes when you've got a nice lead, you you wind up giving up some hits. It happens, but the walks like this—that's the the murderous point here in the inning. Marwin Gonzalez comes over now. Carlos Pena will join in the group. Yeah, that uh, that becomes troublesome. Letting the other team back into the game. They don't have to swing the bats. Blackley now with two more walks in this inning has 15 walks. He's in his 22nd inning. It's not good. We saw an appearance by Travis Blackley in Colorado. He came in. I think he threw about nine or ten pitches, walked two guys, and that was it. Saw Hector Ambrose down there ripping the jacket off, getting ready to go. Josh Fields already throwing. Nate McLeod has a double on a sack fly. And they called a balk on a pitcher last night for that fake to third and turn to first move. Good. Yeah. Should have thrown him out of the game. <laughs> was it Bob Davidson by any chance? Uh, I don't know who it was. But I wish they'd start uh, coming down on that little spin towards second base when nobody defensively is near the bag. Left. Third to first is now illegal, correct? Yes. So there you go, yeah. My goodness. Game has hit a wall. It's pretty entertaining up until this point. <laughs> Day game coming tomorrow at 1.10. Bud Norris will get the start for the Astros tomorrow. He'll be opposed by Miguel Gonzalez. Have you seen Miguel pitch, Ash? Um, I'm sure somewhere along the the way, I uh, nothing standing out in my memory bank right now. Okay. Well, Miguel's 29 years old. He was nine and four last year for the Birds with a 3.25 ERA. Right. Right. Obviously, yeah. I've seen the guy. Up. Yeah, it's just a, one of those that that doesn't stand out for me. Well, Miguel. Born in Guadalajara, Mexico, so he's on the hill tomorrow night for the Orioles. The Orioles don't really have uh, what you would call a real strong number one starter, shall we say? Jason Hamill leads them in wins with seven. He's seven and three with a 5.43 ERA. It's two and zero. Right, you know, the trade rumors are already starting, of course. People starting to circulate different ideas about starting pitchers who might be available in deals. Scott Feldman of the Cubs is one of those names that's out there, and he's having a very good season for Chicago. Two and one. Tola Colon won his fourth in a row. The A's beat the Brewers today, six to one. 
Malone seven and two. Once he goes foul. Brandon Moss hit a home run his ninth. Two and two. White Sox will be here in about ten days. They beat the Mariners in Seattle seven to five. They had a five run lead in the 14th and Seattle tied it and then they got two and won it in the 16th. <laughs> Sounds like your White Sox. Oh man. my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> you guys like to play some extra in the game. Popped up. One that we distinctly remember right here. It's still two and two. Yeah, 14 innings have been good to me. Oh yeah. You got some others beside the dinner? I think I was uh, either with the Astros or Padres when we went into Chicago and played the Cubs and uh, had another 14 inning event and hit a game winner against uh, the Cubbies. We refer to those as events. Yeah. Those are epic events when they go that long. Kyle <laughs> Seeger hit a 14th inning grand slam for the Mariners, but they still lost that game. Up and this one brings Parker and over, but I want to get a shot at it. We know some Orioles fans are here, and you can see them attired in those orange shirts and some of the jerseys, but they make the presence known as they sing the national anthem. And they say, Oh, they really yell it out. Probably didn't take in things like the Babe Ruth Museum when you went to Baltimore as a player, or did no. Did not. So now that you have all this leisure time, when you guys go there, that would be something we can do on your list. Maybe do the tour, have Julia bring her GoPro and video the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Get some insight into it's, some of the artifacts in there. It's definitely worth the visit. Go we'll check that out. And uh, of course, the harbor. You had to love that. Yeah, that was good. Ford McHenry. Sure you've done that. Little shot in the right field. Well, let's see the third, and the bases are loaded. And a single by McLeod. And here come the birds, trailing by five, but they have three men on base, and Machado's coming up. And Bo Porter wants time. Rough inning here for Blackley. Gave up a double to Davis, two run homer to Weeders, then a couple of walks. Now this single. There's only one out. So with Machado coming up, the Astros call in Hector Ambrose, and this becomes a real sticky situation. And we take a look at our Avis replay. This comes from a little earlier on the night. You may recall Orbit and. Uh, all the fun he was having with the fans. A little stumble coming up. Delusions of grandeur going across that. You don't often see Orbit in reverse gear. It has been a night of talent. Didn't phase him one bit. Continuing no. to entertain. But I'm sure internally he was hitting the panic button. Well, Orbit will actually be seeing a trainer after this game. Get stitched back up and after yeah. that one. Yeah, he may be on the DL for uh, well, you guys will be on the road for a while, so hopefully he'll he'll go on a rehab assignment to Corpus. <laughs> a couple right there showing a lot of concern over Orbit's well-being. Orbit looks like he's saying, "I got this. I've been here before." <laughs> Well, Hector Ambrose has been here before also, but the Astros bullpen probably was thinking it might be a nice restful night. Instead, now some tension has been ejected into the evening. He's one and two with a four and a half ERA. Yeah, the right hand hitters hitting 238, but watch out for the lefties. They have been enjoying some success. Well, he's got Machado and Hardy and then Jones. They're all right handed batters.
Well, we told you about that uh, the juggernaut, the Corpus Christi Hooks lineup tonight. With Justin Maxwell, and Jonathan Singleton, and uh, see who else is down there. Maxwell, Maxwell, Singleton. Anyway, they lost two to one. There's too many superstars in that lineup to succeed, Brownie. All that fire. Yeah. Power. It's, it's Murphy's Law, Blummer. <laughs> it really is. Now, Ambries versus Machado. Machado is 0 for 4 tonight. I'm not sure I want to hear you talking about Murphy's Law tonight where the Astros led 9 to 1, and now it's starting to get a little tight. Exactly. Well, Hector's been in some tight situations over that road trip, filling in for Jose Veras twice and getting a save in both games. Well, this looks like it is a save situation almost right now. Five run lead, but it technically is with the potential tying run on deck. That's ball one. Runner third is Valencia, then it's Casilla and McLeod. Keeping the count at one and one for Hector Ambries. They got those two saves, one in Colorado, one against the Angels on the last road trip, and he strung together several consecutive scoreless outings. Eight of them now. There's a shot in the left field. Got a score Valencia, and it's 11 to 7. The single Machado is 31st run batted in. And now the time run comes to the plate. I, I can't believe we're even having to talk about that. Only one out of the inning, also. Now we're starting to get into the meat of this lineup, too. I'm a little surprised to see the. Third base coach hold up Casilla at third base. Ball on the ground like that. Casilla can run. Probably got a good jump seeing the ball down. J.D. Martinez hasn't shown an outstanding arm. It's also one of those scenarios if you do send and you get a throw that gets launched over a cutoff, man, two other base runners just might move up. Third base coach is Bobby Dickerson. That's a strike to Hardy. Already driven in a couple of runs in this game with a single in the first and a homer in the seventh. 252 hitter with the bases loaded. Pops it up, and this one will go back into the seats. No balls, two strikes. This Oriole Club, with all the late inning scoring the Birds have done. Has rewarded the bullpen. The bullpen has 13 wins. And eight times Buck Showalter's club has trailed after six and come back and won. Hardy takes it in the dirt. One to two with Adam Jones on deck. 11 to 7, 14 hits for Houston, 12 for Baltimore. And some power waiting to swing the bat next. And Hardy hit his 13th earlier. Jones has 11 home runs. And then Davis with 20. And these three, four, five hitters can hit for some home runs. It's two and two. Lost the division series to the Yankees last year after winning a one game wild card playoff over Texas. Ground ball, Marlon, Jose, Carlos, turn two. 6 4 3, and what a job by Hector Ambries. After the single by Machado, he gets a double play ball. And 
And there's the way it goes as the Astros get their 76th of the year. And they lead it 11-7. Seven Astros on top of the Orioles, but Norris gets the call tomorrow afternoon in the series finale against the Orioles. Astros pregame live starts at 12.30 p.m. only on Comcast Sportsnet. And let's take a look at tomorrow's pitching matchup brought to you by Chevron. Care for your car. That was not me in the background. That was a car <laughs> horn. Tomorrow it's going to be Miguel Gonzalez for the Baltimore Orioles going up against Bud Norris here at Minute Maid Park, where he's been phenomenal. It'll be our chance to take a look at Miguel Gonzalez tomorrow. I haven't seen him pitch yet. Well, you can join us, uh, and coverage begins at 12.30 on Comcast Sportsnet Houston. Astros pregame live. Here's Brian Mattis now. He's pitcher number four. A 2-0 and record, a 3.180 ERA for Mattis. And as you can see, he's really kept his whip down low. With a total of uh, 19 base runners, 13 hits, and six walks in 22 and two thirds innings. It's walks and hits per innings pitched. Brian Mattis used to be one of the great hopes in this what was to be future starting rotation for the Orioles. Jose Altuve is two for four, including a homer. Yeah, he really was. Uh, first round draft choice in 08, he was the fourth player drafted. Strike one. Brian's 26. He's from Grand Junction, Colorado, and he was a starter when he first came up in 09. But uh, ran into tough sledding, especially in 2011 when he was 1 and 9 with an ERA of 10.69. And last year, uh, 6 and 10 with a 487 as a starter and reliever. Okay, those are. Hard numbers uh, for a manager to keep sending somebody out to the mound. Foul back. One and two. You know how teams are always looking for that left handed starter. Yep. And it just seems like the majority of the times the guys that you pick you think are, are really going to be something wind up being kind of a 90 mile, mile an hour guy instead of one of the right handers who you're already loaded with that maybe have a, a chance of being more in that mid 90s range. It's hard to you try the best you can to balance your pitching staff righties and lefties. But you know when you, you just have better arms on one side or the other. Uh, you're safer safer generally speaking drafting in that direction. It's two and two. Troy Tulowitzki had a big big day for the Rockies. They clobbered the Reds 12 to four. He went five for five with two homers. After delivering the game winning homer last night, John Garland won it. And, uh, Todd Helton hit his sixth home run. Tulowitzki now has 15 bombs. Cargo hit three, and he has 17 homers.
Well, we got a good peek at Cargo as well as Tulowitzki, who is just a terrific player. Cargo just takes some great swings. He comes up empty quite a few times, but yeah. well, he gives himself a chance with that hack. He's such an athlete. Foul back. These guys, you know, Ash, when you came up, you didn't see guys built like Cargo that often, did you? No. No, not many. Uh, there were uh, there were guys that were really put together. You know, you were talking about Jeff Burroughs kind of being the, the big number one back in 69. Altuve hustles. Here's Machado out of the glove hand, and he got it. He just has a special arm, doesn't he? He makes that play very smoothly. Of course, we're getting pretty accustomed to see Matt Dominguez making these plays, and that tends to use the glove on that kind of a play. That's, that's really nice. Smooth and quick. And there was something on that ball right there. He's got a great arm going on the run like that. It just seems to stay on that same plane. Could have seen this guy playing shortstop for a long time, but for that knee. Now Jason Castro. He hit the two run homer in the first. And then he walked in the fourth. That's a strike to Castro. You know, we, we see this and we'll see it tomorrow. Say a guy's drafted number one as a shortstop. Who knows? He could play anywhere. Usually shortstops are the most versatile types of player. So the idea, the intent is to keep him at short, but there might be a need somewhere else. Well, meet sometimes and body type sometimes too. These yeah. guys draft a guy at a college or high school at six foot three playing shortstop. You know, they start to mature and the weight starts to stick, or they get on a different program and get too big to play shortstop by big league standards and have to move over those corner positions. That's an excellent point. And uh, there's Cal Ripken Jr., not very large. I was just about to say, you mean like that Cal Ripken guy? Yeah. Well, A Rod, he didn't yeah. have to move to shortstop. He could have played for a different team and continued to play shortstop, but going to the Yankees with Derek Jeter had to go to third base. <laughs> How about that Jeff Blunga? Oh. Here's Hardy. Backhanding for out number two. Well, Blum is a big bodied guy who played all around the infield. That's right. Yeah, came up as a shortstop. Let's go to Julia. Thanks, Brownie. Some of you watching this game right now don't have CSN in your own home. If your TV provider doesn't carry CSN yet, call and tell them you want CSN so you can have the very best coverage of your Astros. This is your network, Astros fans. You deserve it. To get the facts, go to IWantCSNHouston.com. Guys. Thank you. Here's J.D. Martinez. He had a homer in the fourth inning. He's one for four. And it's a ball. Man. Julia, you guys have, have just barely been here. Now you're you're packed already. You're heading out of town already tomorrow. Just a crazy stretch. Twelve out of fifteen on the road during this stretch for the Astros. So next time in, you get to settle in. Jose Veras. This four run lead is getting loose. And that becomes a little bit of a thought for a manager. Day game coming tomorrow regarding using closers and things of that nature. But uh, the mantra is you win today's game. That's what it's about. Yeah, you always deal with tomorrow, tomorrow. Win it while you can. That was a good one, Yogi. That Yo was Yogi good. taught me that one. <laughs> Did he? Yeah, it, so it sounds like a Yogi isn't. Like catcher logic. Well, Bud Black a few days ago got into that long extra inning game for the Padres, and he had to use well, he he felt he had to use the next day's starting pitcher because otherwise he would have been out of relievers. Oh boy! So, so we we went for today's game, and they won it. Who started the next day? I don't know. Yeah, it'd be interesting to look at. Yeah, very much so. Usually it's a day game, so you can't call up a guy from the minors. You can't get him there in time, right? <laughs> There's a drive deep left center field. Jones is cruising back, though, and he got there to the warning track for out number three. We move to the ninth inning. It's 11 to 7 Astros.
Top of the ninth. Houston Astros on top, 11 to 7 over the Orioles. And just like we promised earlier in the game, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. And it was a home run fest during this game for the Houston Astros. Jason Castro started off, opened the floodgates a little bit. Marwin Gonzalez getting back in the act of hitting home runs. A lot of RBIs out there to be had. So it's good to see that they put those many that many runs on the board. Kind of helps out later in the inning. Later in the game now that Jose Veras is in. There's a look at that six home run game by six different guys. Last time they did it, August 16, 2000. Julio Lugo, Tim Bogart, Jeff Bagwell, Moises Alou, Lance Berkman, Chris Truby. Yeah, Chris had a nice home run here that year. It's fun to see those graphics come up and Recall some of the names that you haven't thought about for a while. Well, that was the year in 2000. The Astros set the National League record for home runs in a season, 249. Most people would not have guessed that. Very Rich, explosive season. Richard Hidalgo hit what, like 44? He hit 44. Bagwell hit 47. Yeah. Jose Barris 0 and 4 with a 4.15 ERA, 11 for 14 in saves. This is not a safe situation, but it tells you how much Bo Porter wants this game. Tell you what, he better pitch like it's a safe situation with the way the Baltimore Orioles swing the bats late in the game. Well, that point is driven home by the fact that they have Jones, Davis, and Weeters coming up here in the ninth inning. Well, those are uh, rally starting type guys, extra base hit type guys. Jones is one for four. Orioles have 12 hits. The Astros have 14. No errors in the game. Eight men left on by Baltimore, five stranded by Houston. And it's up ball one from Veras who pitched in the final game of the Angels series Monday night picking up save number 11 in the two to one win. He worked two thirds of an inning allowing one hit no runs through 15 pitches. It's now two and oh. Harris gave up a double to Alberto Cayaspo and a walk to Josh Hamilton before he got the final out of that game. Struck out two Monday night. Bounce by the pitcher. Altuve over to first. Good strong throw, one out. Now Chris Davis. Davis has singled and double tonight in four trips. Davis is the second player in Oriole history to hit 20 homers this early in a season. Brady Anderson hit his 20th in Baltimore's 49th game in 96. And he went on to set a single season club record of 50. That's strike one. Bet you didn't have him on your fantasy team that year. <laughs> well, that was a shocker, wasn't it? And uh, caught a lot of people off guard. <laughs> what was it? What was his next best home run total in a season? Yeah. About 20 or so. It was, was crazy. That. Yeah. Two strikes. Best 24. Okay. Actually put together some pretty nice seasons there, but not quite 50 ish. Strikeout for out number two. Houston Astros baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at Southwest.com. And by the Mitsubishi Outlander Sport Limited Edition. Visit MitsubishiCars.com. Thanks, life tomorrow. Two outs now, and it's Matt Wieters, the batter. Wieters made things a bit more interesting with his two-run homer in the eighth inning. He also has a walk tonight in this 11-7 slugfest. The Astros have won six of their last seven. The 
Harris trying to nail it down for Dallas Keuchel. It would be win number three of the year for him. That's strike one. Fifteen thousand five twenty six. Open Barris can put away the Orioles. Check swing roller to third. Dominguez in and throws to first. Throws it wildly. Pena came off the bag to stop it from going up the right field line. But Weeters is able to reach. But Dominguez chose to use the glove hand and then the throw was not on target. It's a tough play. Big left-handed hitter, third baseman, usually playing in that six hole. And a little bit deeper than normal and on the check swing had to come in. I think it was a smart move using the glove. I think he would have maybe had a chance if that ball's online. Weeders credited with a hit. Now we get a pinch runner for Weeders. Uh, no, no pinch runner for Weeders. That announcement was being made, we thought, but maybe erroneously. Classic deke right there. Okay. Well, they are a man short, though, with uh, Marquecas, so it does kind of limit what Buck Walter can do in situations like this. Valencia, the batter, he has walked in double. And they fall one. Looks like Chris Dickerson out on deck. He would be pinch hitting if the game continued after this batter. For Steve Pierce. One and one. Rather filthy right on the heels of a heater right at the bottom of the knees. Tough to answer either one of those pitches. He wouldn't chase it. Two balls, two strikes. Nice job by Carlos to get out and come up with that pitch. He's had himself a night. Hector Ambrose threw eight pitches in two thirds of an inning. They had one hit, no runs. Had a flat play, one third of an inning, three hits, three runs, two walks, and a strikeout. He threw 31 pitches. One and missed, and that's the ball game as the Astros have tied up this series. Harris comes in to get the final outs, and the Astros, with all the slugging they did, banged out six home runs tonight. On their way to an 11 to 7 win, and that makes it seven wins in their last eight ball games.